All right, so I want to say welcome to our YouTube channel, Seshu Mani Metanetra YouTube channel, ETM Hotep, and Uncle Jasineb. Uh, this is your brother Wujao, and I also have other members of the Seshu Mani Metanetra uh, here on the panel. And uh, today, or to this evening, I want to do a quick uh, video to address um, three claims that was made uh, by uh, Brother Zion Lex as of recent. All right, and so I'll give a little backdrop of, of the claims and why, you know, I'm taking the time out to um, address them and to actually utilize it for a, a teaching moment to edify, you know, the public and educate everyone on uh, what to do and what not to do. And hopefully, you know, everyone could learn something. So I hope you all uh, have your notes, you know, pen and pad ready um, or, you know, a notepad on your computer open and ready and have your books open if you are already a student of uh, Egyptian culture or the language. All right, so I'm going to share just a few things. Nothing too deep, but just want to go over three of the claims that the Brother Zion Lex made that I had addressed and, um, and you know, was subsequently uh, hidden and or deleted uh, and so on. So I'll give all the backdrop. But in the meantime, um, anybody on the panel, if you want to, you know, uh, greet the greet the audience and uh, let everyone know that you're in the building. Hotep Abed, peace family. It's your brother June. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the show and leave with satisfaction. Hotep. Hotep, uh, this is Amy Kent, and uh, yeah, welcome. All right, I guess. Okay. All right. Uh, we uh, have... My bad. I'm late. ETM Motel, Rennie Sean. Welcome in peace. My name is Sean. Thanks for everybody for tuning in and liking and sharing the show. All right. Yeah. Make sure you share the show um, because, you know, like I said, the reason why I'm taking time out to do this is, is to take the opportunity to use this as a teaching moment. You know, um, myself, I've been a teacher of uh, Rodney Kemet and Sesh Metal Nature. Writing Kemet being the language of the ancient Egyptians and Sesh Metanetra being the writing system. Most people refer to as hieroglyphic writing system. Um, I've been a teacher of that for over seven years now. So whenever I see um, different conversations or different claims or the sharing of information that may be um, not quite accurate or not quite correct, then, you know, I try to uh, do my best to uh, correct it and to um, you know edify anyone making the mistake and then those who may be witnessing the mistakes being made and not know uh, one way or the other if that is um, accurate or not, all right? So I do it in a, a respectful way and in a way in which everybody can learn, all right? And so that was the spirit behind me uh, making a comment on the Brother Zion Lex, Lex's page on Facebook, all right? So he made a couple of claims um, on his page and it was just brought to my, it was brought to my attention that the claims were being made. I guess people had shared, uh, his post about his claim. I didn't see it directly on his page. I'm not a, a member of his page or, or a subscriber to his page. So I saw it indirectly from someone else sharing it and bringing it to my attention and asking me a question about it. Okay. And so what I did, I took the time out to click on the link and read it the one that was shared to me and then i started to browse his page to see some of the other things related to kemet that he had been um discussing um i don't know know the brother zion lex um well let me back up today there was a conversation on the sonetta um studios platform uh youtube channel and the brother sanjetti addressed a couple of things that the brother Zion Lex had uh, claimed on his page as well. I didn't get a chance to see that. In fact, I didn't know that the brother Sanjetti was was even on the show um, until after, you know, completely after the fact. Um, but so when I had tuned in to the show, uh, Sanjetti was not there, but uh, the brother Polite and Zion Lex were still on the panel. And so I had just asked in the chat, to um if someone could ask the brother zion lex why did he delete 
and or hide my comment from his page and block me from his page. And I, w I was very curious about that because um, the brother has recently been coming to our platform here and answering questions. I mean, excuse me, asking questions. And he's welcomed here, you know, to ask questions. And I've addressed him here on this channel before uh, his questions. That is, you can, you can go into the archives right now and see the chat and actually hear me address a couple of his questions um, that I've seen in the chat. And, you know, there's no problem. All are welcome on this channel. You know, we don't I don't discriminate. We don't discriminate uh, based on whatever you believe. It doesn't none of that stuff matters. You know, uh, we don't discriminate on on any of that, um, because I know that there's a, a running uh, adversary adversarial um, situation between Hebrews and quote unquote comedics, you know, for whatever people style that uh, <laughs> that title for. Uh, you know, where you got people who subscribe to Egypt in some form or fashion. They are against the people who subscribe to uh, Judaism or Hebrew um, doctrines and belief systems, et cetera, et cetera. So I know I know that exists. And um, but I don't engage in that kind of um, in kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't I don't you know, I, I it, it has no interest of mine and I don't see it as being productive. So. So I what we welcome any anybody here to be able to ask questions and find out about the language and the culture of ancient Egypt or Kemet. And in doing so, what I do, I try to be careful of not bringing that baggage into this environment here. And so, um, you know, we do our best to maintain that. And that's what we've done, you know, pretty much. And so I just wanted to ask, you know, know from the brother, why was I blocked from his page? Because I, I didn't say anything that was disrespectful in my in my post um, at all. And so I wanted to hear from him. So finally, I was able to call in to the show and ask the brother specifically, why why was I blocked and my post deleted? Now, when you block someone, of course, it's either, you know, you could delete the post or when you block them, it becomes hidden. So hidden and, and, and deleted, uh, same difference. Uh, in regards to it not being seen. So I just asked the brother and, and basically the brother answered, and you can go to Sonetta's channel because I don't want to be accused of putting uh, words into the brother's mouth, but I've, obviously I'm not going to repeat what he said verbatim. I'm paraphrasing. The brother basically said was implying that I was disrespectful, you know, and so I read verbatim what I posted on the air to to the to Sonetta's audience and nothing in the post was disrespectful because and so and I think the brother realized that because he later gave an apology uh, for that um but what he did he incorporated some other elements that that have nothing to do with me and it has nothing to, to do with my post and so what I feel is that because these situations between Hebrews and comedics and and other people it creates this bad vibe to where everybody's on defense and everybody's arguing and fussing to the point where here I come. I'm trying to educate the brother on his mistakes because I understand that the brother is a novice at uh, learning uh, the Egyptian language and writing system. And I um, uh, commend him for learning. I encourage everyone to learn. If you if you want to know something about Kemet, you have to do it by way of the language. So, you know, um, I always encourage people to do that. So the brother uh, to me is attempting to do that. And so there's nothing, um, negative or bad that anyone should be able to say about the, those efforts. The problem comes is while being a beginner and a person who is, um, starting that journey to learn, when you start to make claims and you start to share information, you have to be very, very cautious. You have to know your limitations. You have to know the, um, you know, your strengths and weaknesses and so when you make an error, it's incumbent upon those who deal with the language, deal with the culture on a more uh, specialized or focused level to come up, come along, pull a coattail and make those corrections. And that's what I seek to do. That's what I always do. All right. And I do it with respect. All right. So I was shocked that the brother blocked me and I wanted to know why. All right. So so just letting you all know the background between uh, or the reason why um, 
I'm doing this this evening. OK. And so. Um, so because I was blocked and everything and uh, the conversation today uh, may have been kind of um, jumbled a bit because we had uh, three of us on the phone and and um, and, you know, a lot of a lot of expl explaining was done, not really getting to the heart of the situation, which is, you know, why my comment or my my correction was was being blocked. All right. So and that was my only purpose of of calling in or a uh, sign had had uh, returned my call or whatever the case is. All right. So I'm going to take this time out right now to go over those three claims that Brother Zion Lex made and the corrections that I uh, did and intended for his page for his readers. All right. Because I know Zion Lex has an audience and when you have an audience and people following you whatever you say is can become influential and so it's always best in that position to make sure that you uh, are sharing accurate information all right and this is the the stance that um that we take we move for accuracy uh reality facts and everything like that regardless of of the person their skin color none of that stuff matters when it comes to accuracy all right. So I'm going to get right on into it and address these claims. All right. So hopefully you all got your pen and pad and please share the video and it. And um, and so if you have any questions, just hold off on your questions because I, because I will entertain questions or we will entertain questions. Hold off on your questions uh, until I can pay attention to the chat. And when you ask a question, if you can use the at symbol and then the, the screen name Seshu Mighty Meta Nature. So that the name so that the name will be highlighted and I can see that it's a question um, that would be great. All right. So I hope you all can um, do that. All right. So let's go right into um, what we're dealing with. OK, so here are the three claims that uh, we're going to address. All right. So it's three claims that was made. One dealing with the word uh, Nemart uh, on this page. And I'm going to show I'm going to show you uh, his his um post uh directly but i'm just going to summarize here so one uh namart being a a word used for um the name nimrod uh being the biblical nimrod that's number one two the word hemet chai uh being used by zion lex to prove that uh to prove misogyny you know that women are property of men all right and three, the word shalom as an Egyptian greeting. OK, so those are the three things that I'm limited, limiting this discussion to. And um, so we're just going to get started. So here's the first one. So we, we're going to deal with the first one, uh, the Nimrod <coughs> um, claim. OK, so here is a screenshot of the brother Zion Lex post. All right. And so I'm just going to read it. I know you all should be able to see it on the screen. But I'll read it just in case it may be hard to read uh, a bit. And um, so he says in page 343 of E.A. Wallace Budge's dictionary is the name of a deified deceased king. <clears throat> Namart. And then he has um, the uni Unicode uh, glyphs uh, posted on here. Just as a quick side note. Um, I've seen people do that. And, you know, I know years ago, um, a lot of people used to do that in our in our Facebook group. And I let them know that um, although, you know, you can do that, uh, it's you got to be kind of cautious of doing that, because the way that the um, glyphs are written in a linear fashion that way, that's not how the scribes did it. So I always let people know that so that they won't get used to that. All right. It's it's nice, you know, especially when you're beginning to be able to do that and and uh, put the glyphs on the screen. Uh, in that fashion, but it's not recommended. And so I just want to make that a side note. All right. To continue, uh, anyone familiar with linguistics knows the T sound is dental and thus equivalent or interchangeable with the D sound. Thus, Wallace Budge himself states that this is none other than Nimrod. The determinative at the end of the word is the seated deified king. Another variation in spelling is, and then he has another variation, which again ends with a determinative, this time presenting an important deceased ancestor. Thus, in the very language of Kemet, Rani Kemet, the name of Nimrod is preserved with grammatical markers called determinatives, 
which categorize him as a deceased deified king. And then he goes on to say, why did y'all challenge me to learn Medonetra fire? All right. So the very last sentence kind of puts the, the, the framework, in, you know, lets me know, um, you know, this brother's uh, mode of operandi of why he's learning the language. Because if you notice that in his post, he has an extra statement in that kind of environment you know why did y'all challenge me to learn metal nature um crickets you know all that that kind of language of of this competition type of thing and you know that's cool but uh you know it it kind of colors the 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 conversation and i wouldn't recommend that i don't recommend that mindset at all okay so i just want to point that out as well so let's back up so under it you see the picture that he's using this is a picture that he posted here uh, Namar, this is page four, 343 um, in column B of uh, E.A. Wallace Budge's dictionary on Egyptian hieroglyphic language. All right. Now, I want you all to notice that Budge gives no primary reference where this where this word could be found at all. OK, so Budge has the two very various uh, three variation spellings of this particular word. We have one here that's that he has highlighted in yellow the other one which he posted up which he posted and then a third way which is without the determinative no, no determinative here so there's three di different ways and budge is simply saying this is nimrod then he has the hebrew and then he has the hebrew um script from right to left writing out spelling out nimrod all right nimrod all right so so number one what i pointed out so let me just let uh give you all my uh response to his um post so this is what i said on his post um the budge entry gives no reference or source where the word is to be found the belief that nemart is the biblical nimrod has no factual basis because there's nothing budge didn't give anything for somebody to draw that conclusion at all okay the word nemart is a common name for people of Libyan ancestry in ancient times. At least four well-known people are known by such a name and held in noble standing. One, we have a person named Namart, who is the father of the Pharaoh Shashank the first of the 22nd dynasty. Two, we have Namart, who is the ruler of Heracleopolis, son of Shashank the first. Three, we have Namart, who is high priest of Amun, and ruler of Heracl Heracleopolis, son of Asorkan the second. Then we have four Namart, who is the ruler of Hermopolis during the twenty fifth dynasty. All right, so those are the the uh, four that I cited, and I cite those four because again, Budge didn't didn't give any reference to who or where this word is to be found in the literature. To in fact to allow people to know if this is a reference to a biblical Nimrod at all. So you would have to take a leap of speculation, pure speculation to believe that this word refers to the biblical Nimrod. And so this is what I was pointing out. And that's an error on the part of any student or researcher, et cetera. You should not make uh, such a, a leap of speculation to do that. All right. So um, one of the things that that uh, the brother Zion Lex said in his post, as you can see, is that the uh, determinative, this this seated um, person in the chair and this kneeling person here, he keeps referring to it as a deified deceased king. OK. And on the conversation today on the phone, he, he was saying that as if that was a key element in his determination now by the way i asked him on the phone on sonetta's platform um for clarification i asked him does he believe that uh the the word namart refers to the biblical nimrod and he didn't give me a straight answer he said that well that's you know he doesn't want people to think that he made it up that it's budge budge so i asked him for clarity i said well what do you think and um Based on his response and based on his post here, he believes that it's Nimrod. And so I just pointed out that 
that the four citations that I refer to is not Nimrod. It's not the biblical Nimrod whatsoever. Um, because these people are mentioned in text and all of the um, information surrounding these four individuals has nothing to do with what we can um, ascertain about Nimrod from the Bible. Everything that you know about Nimrod from the Bible has nothing, no corresponding um, um, parts with these four individuals that I cited. OK, so therefore, when we see this word Nimart, there is no way that somebody could say that this is Nimrod. All right. So now to take it a step further. Um, somebody had a question? No, I believe somebody walked in. Okay. So um so to correct about about the A the A um the determinative, all right. What I want to show, because on the phone today he said the determinatives deal with a deified king. He keeps saying that. And so what I corrected him on the phone live today was that this glyph here is Gardner Code A fifty. Now on the phone, of course, I can't show what I'm showing you all, uh the audience right now so I'm showing it now so that everyone can be pr properly um, notified um, and informed so Gardner code a 50 through a 52 is showing on your screen and so what I told him today was that the the a 50 is a uh, man in a chair but it's a it's a glyph that represents a class of words referring to um, revered people noble people OK, uh, illustrious people, illustrious, revered, noble, all three of those words in that semantic range. That's what this particular glyph used as a determinative will help classify. And so this is a, a screenshot from um, Alan Gardner's uh, grammar. And this is something that Zion Lex made reference to. Um, he kept calling it a dictionary, but it's a grammar. And so Alan Gardner's grammar, where where we um pull from in terms of these gardner codes a50 a51 and a52 that you see here you can see that gardner has a man of rank seated in a chair 51 is the same as this but with the um flail or um flagellum in his hand same as this so it has the same meaning and then 52 is a noble squatting with the flagellum or flail all right so the meanings doesn't change the, the um in fact a51 is more of a new kingdom uh uh use and so these are used interchangeably to classify the same group of words all right and so if you read here um this word also doubles as a logograph for the word shepsis which is the word for noble as you can see here on the screen and we have A51 here, same thing. Shepsi, to be noble, which is the verb verb form of the same word. Okay, Shepset. And most people may recognize Shepsis or Shepset in the name of a king who was a female, popularly known as Hatshepsut. Okay, her throne name was um, Ma'at Ka-Ra, but most of us know her as Hatshepsut. And so her name, Hat, means to be in front to be at the first or in front of something. And then Sheps, Shepes is noble. And then the T, Shepset, Shepset is, uh, is the feminine form of that same word. So it's a feminine or female noble. So her name means foremost of noble, of uh, foremost of the noble um, women. All right, so a woman who is foremost of nobles, all right? So that's what her name means. And so and so when you say deified king, you know, that is to put a little um, spin on it, because this is something that he was emphasizing today on the phone, uh, deceased or deified king and, and going into, you know, divine and, and, and godhood or whatever the case is. And so that kind of takes you off into um, another tangent. And I would not recommend doing that. All right. Because there's a distinction between nature and what's deified versus what is illustrious noble and you know considered revered all right so these are are different 
Um, different determinants are used for that. All right. And I can understand, you know, when people are first starting out, they can make that mistake. All right. So that's about the determinative. And if you notice in the word, you see it here, both here, the mart and so on. Now, just to give a primary source, this is the inscription of uh, Shashank. Uh, dedicated to his father, who is Namart in Abydos. This is from the 21st dynasty. And this is a, um, a, a redrawing of the actual Steli or Stella. Okay. This is coming from um, a Stella that was found or um, located in Abydos. All right. And on here, you can see the word several times, Namart. All right. So I'm going to blow it up here all right now in terms of those of you who are with me on the panel um let's do a little uh exercise here and so um i just blew up a section of of the um primary source uh actually it's a facsimile you know like i said a, a drawing of it so uh, it's not the actual artifact itself um but in that first line uh in this first row here uh, I'm going to narrow it down to the first row because, I, you know, for time's sake, I don't want to turn this into a freestyle Friday. Um, and I have this this block here and I'm going to put this block where you tell me to put it, where you see the name or the word uh, Namart. Now, remember, this is how Budge has it. You have the um, variation. So you have the water ripple, you have the vulture, you have the sickle, you have the open mouth, single stroke. You have the pestle or um, uh, teat. As we say, symbol T, they have the noble in the chair. That's one variation. Then you have the water ripple, three strokes, the sickle, mouth, and the tethering rope. Single stroke, noble, squat, uh, kneeling. All right. And then we have it without determinative. Water ripple, sickle, mouth, tethering rope. So remember that. And let's go over here in this first line. Do you see any of those variations in that first line? Anybody on the panel? Uh, can it be seen? Uh, uh, am I being heard? <laughs> I just want to make sure. It's not so clear on my screen, so I don't know. Um. All right, for the sake of time, because I don't want to uh, make this longer than I have to. Uh, for the sake of time, let me get my cursor back over there. All right, where we find it here. So I'm just going to run through this. We find it here. It's right, right here first. <laughs> it's the first word. We have Namart Makeru. All right. This is a person's name, and then it's saying true of voice. He's vindicated, all right? And this is the word makeru. These last two glyphs is abbreviation of that word, makeru. That is used in terms of a deceased, a person who's deceased, even in the um, offering formula, what we refer to as the hotep dinasu. The, um, when a person's name is mentioned, after right after that name, we say makeru, all right? Similar to how uh, Muslims, when they mention a person's name or... Um, like the uh, Prophet Muhammad, they'll say, um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, etc. You have certain things that you say after a person's name. Well, in Kemet, one of those things for um, a deceased person was Makheru. All right. Just to, as a side note for everyone. So that's one instance where we where we see the name. And let me just show you all some more um, where we see it. Let's see. Um, we're going to find it again here. And we find it again, I think, right here. Not I think, it's right here again. Uh, and if any of you all on the panel see another instance, let me know. Um, you should see another one. And I'm just going to show you all four. And here yeah, it is again. I think I see from YouTube. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the one. So. And uh, that's another one. And I'm going to show you all a fifth one. Here, right here at the bottom. Okay. So I just want to point out that 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 those of us who are um, students of the culture and have a focus on the culture, we go beyond dictionaries 
uh, we understand the the usefulness and function of dictionaries, but we do not um, stop at dictionaries as an end all be all. All right. So, again, I want to point out to you all that Budge gives no citation, no reference to where this word is used. So in our customary fashion, we actually go to the literature. You know, we do a philological exercise, which is to to uh, read the actual literature. And over over the years, those of us who are students of the culture, we have time to read a lot of literature. All right. And so we have a reference point to where we know where these words are, how they're used, the context in which they're used in, what they uh, connote versus what they denote, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So I showed you all one, two, three, four, five instances, and I could probably pull out some more if I took time to um, to actually go through this and read, uh, read everything. But that should be suffice for now. And so what I'm showing you all is what Budge failed to do. Budge did not show you this as a reference um, in terms of where that word is. OK, so the word Namart. So the takeaway from this is that this dictionary entry Namart does not have to mean or or be a reference to the biblical Nimrod at all. OK, as again, I said that the word Nimart um, coming from a Libyan ancestry as Nimlot, this R here, the open mouth that we would transliterate as an R um, was also used to represent a lateral approximate sound, which we call an L. The L sound when we say uh, little Lucy, light, that l sound is called an uh, alveolar pr approximate. And so because in the phonology of the Egyptian language, they did not um, have that specific sound. They used the glyph to double as uh, for the R, which is either a trill or a flap in the language, or an L, which is an alveolar approximate. So this word very well um would be nimlot or nimlotch, okay? And if you were to look up the word nimlot, N-I-M-L-O-T, you can Google nimlot and you will see that there are several nimlots in ancient Kemet with Libyan ancestry, okay? So I just want to point that out. So, it, so it, there's, there's nothing in the data that will suggest that this has to be nimrod of the Bible, OK, and so all of these things I was pointing out um, or made an attempt to point out to the brother and to his audience. All right. And these are things that we have to uh, be careful of when we're um, changing, you know, uh, exchanging and sharing information. All right. So does anybody on the panel have anything to say before I move on to the next one? Um, yeah, I think I believe this is um, where you had asked him about um was it um if you believe that um that was the same nimrod mentioned in the bible and i think he said that um that question was asinine but i think on the post that you were showing um he was saying that um that barge himself states that this is the nimrod so he uh, so he didn't really provide any any um I'm, when I, i'm not talking about barge but um of um it sounds like he, he didn't he did he use barge as as a primary text or barge dictionary as the primary text yeah well he he implied in his answer response his response to me really wasn't an answer to my question but his response to me uh all i wanted to know was does zion lex believe that this word namart is is referring to nimrod of the bible and in his response to me was he was saying that um, that Budge believed it, you know, this could be nothing other than Nimrod, et cetera, et cetera. And that Budge knew Hebrew and and all of that. Um, so but again, um, the data is insufficient to come to that conclusion because Budge never give a reference where the word is used. And that's and see, those of us who study the language um, and teach the language, we understand the the handicaps of utilizing Budge's dictionary. And this is something that I uh, um, express and stress to beginners learning. I let them know about Budget Dictionary and I, I let people know firsthand or first up to get all the dictionaries you can. And I tell them the strengths and weaknesses of these various different dictionaries. Certain dictionaries have strengths that others don't. 
certain dictionaries have weaknesses that others don't. And so I go through the dictionaries and let people know what's what. And one of the weaknesses of Budge's dictionary is one that he um, he created a, a uh, unique transliteration system that none of the other people use. So you have to learn his transliteration system specifically for his works. So all of Budge's books from his dictionary to his um, translations of various different uh, Egyptian texts, you have to know about his transliteration system. That's number one. And two, Budge had a tendency in his dictionary to group a lot of words together in one entry when when they're different words, one, and in two, there may be different variations of words that have a, a different nuance. But in his entry, the implication will be that it only means one thing. And this is just different ways that you could spell it. And so and that's a problem. And so I point those out to students and I point that out to the general public um, of the handicaps of using budge. So budge is something that, um, you know, that could be used for sure. But you have to understand those things. All right. Right. And I think it's great that um, you went as far as um, I believe um, finding of um, some of the primary uh, from the primary text finding the sources where you have um, as you mentioned the four different um, people who were not uh, who were going by the name of Nemart. So I think that was good and I think that's what he if he had done he probably would have found out instead of just relying on on, on just uh, a dictionary entry you know, right so and find out that uh, in the text obviously exactly. Um, and so, you know, in the, in the learning process, you know, so for those who are watching now, um, you know, again, uh, anything that I'm saying, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just sharing information, let people know how they can discern. And so just simply look up the word Nimlot. Um, and people may not know to look that up because of the mouth being an R, Nimart. But if you look up Nimlot, you will probably uh, be rewarded with uh, a lot of information to let you know and support uh, everything that I'm saying. All right. And so I only pointed out four, but there's more, and, you know, for the sake of time, I only point out four and on my post, I only point out four, but there are others. All right. And so, you know, just wanted to let make sure everyone's aware of that. Okay. So that's that particular claim. So, so in summary, again, the claim is wrong. This Namart is not, pointing to or does not have to point to the biblical uh, Nimrod. There's nothing about the biblical Nimrod and the stories attached to him in the Bible that corresponds to the people that share this name in ancient Egypt. Okay, period. All right. So you have to do a lot of of inventive and creativeness to imply that. And so we have to be careful of that. All right. So the next claim. So remember, I'm going to claim number two. Claim number two is is uh, about the topic of misogyny. And so what the brother Zion Lex does, he uses the word um, Hemet Chai as an example of proof that Egypt was about misogyny and so on and so forth. So in fairness, I'm just going to show his exact post because I don't want to be uh, accused of putting words in the brother's mouth. So this is what he said, and this is what I addressed. So his post, he says, Brother Jabari, I guess he's addressing Brother Jabari. He says the Bible, oh, he, he, I guess he's quoting what Jabari says, because he says, Brother Jabari, uh, the Bible is misogynistic. Women are often betrayed as property. So I, I'm, I'm just going to assume that he's quoting Jabari or something of that nature. All right. And so he says, Hebrews say, what chapter and verse is that Jabari? And then Jabari says, hold on, family. It's somewhere in Deuteronomy. I'm sure of it. So I guess Zion Lex here is is like portraying like a play what what people are saying. So Jabari says this Hebrew say that then Jabari. So now here's Zion Lex speaking. So he says, while you're looking for that Jabari, since we're on the topic of women being portrayed as property, you are aware that one of the ancient comedic names for wife is Hemeti. Now I want you all to note how he spells this. Uh, where the determinative of for man's genitalia, a phallus, and a, a kneeling man with his hand extended, is used in conjunction with the word for women, or woman, 
to show that a married woman in ancient Kemet was viewed as the property of her husband, right? Then he puts crickets and so on. And see, that's what I mean by by this extra stuff that's added on all the time. This is this is I see I incur I discourage the use of that because it it it's not the environment to learn when you when you do little things like that and I and me personally I think that's a that's very immature and and you and we have to take this these things serious and very surgical and scientific and when people do that you lose and I, I don't think it's fair to the public or people who are trying to learn so I don't encourage that. I understand it. You know, it could be fun and things of, of all of that kind of stuff. You poke fun at people. You know, that's fine and everything. But you, you have to have a, a sense of maturity and sense and um, seriousness about your work. All right. Um, and plus, if you're a beginner and you're learning, there's really no time to play. You know, you, you play once you get to a point where you have a, a level of competency and mastery over something. Not when you are just beginning out. All right. You know, and a lot of teachers will tell you the same thing, no matter what, whether it's scholastic stuff or it could be sports and and whatever the case is. If you're training, you're not going to joke around in the beginning of your training. You know, once you've trained and, and you, you know, you have a command of the skill, then you could, you know, start playing around. All right. So anyway, so back to this. OK, so now. Uh, the reason why I said take note of the word empty, hem, hem, where he spells it is because Zion Lex assumed that this was. A single word and how you know that is because he spelled it as a single word and he used it he he says that the determinative on this particular word is uh and notice he says where the determinative uh, okay first of all notice they says you are aware that one of the comedic ancient uh comedic names for wife is hemti where the determinative is the phallus and the kneeling man so his assumption was that this was a word, a single word. So what I um, responded to on his on his page was to enlighten him that this is not a, a single word. It's actually a phrase. It's two words juxtaposed next to each other. The first word is Hemet, which means wife. And then the next word is Chai, which means man. And so in the uh, grammar of the Egyptian language, you juxtapose two substantives side by side to denote what's called a genitive relationship. And it's what we would call today possession, but not possession in the sense of property. It's possession in the sense of a relationship. And it's called a genitive construction. And so we have Hemet Chai, which means wife of a man or a man's wife. That's all this word means is a man's wife. And in English, we say a man's with an apostrophe S to show um, the relationship or possession. It's no different than us saying uh, using the, the pronoun my. If I say, for example, my daughter graduated from high school. When I say my daughter it's not that she's my property because I can be 60 years old and my daughter could be uh, 30 living on her own, married, and I got grandchildren. I will still refer to her as my daughter, but she's not my property. So the possessive pronoun my does not denote property in that sense. So we have to understand that genitive construction simply establishes the relationship between the two substantives. So we have wife and man. What is the relationship between those two? Well, uh, the wife is is the man's wife. So if I say my daughter or my son and so on and so forth. It's the same thing. All right. And so let's go to the, the, the definition of misogyny, because if you if you notice that the point that he's making is in response to uh, someone, uh, I guess the brother Jabari, claiming the Bible is mi uh, misogynistic and women are often portrayed as property. And so in the sense of property, we have this misogyny issue. And so Zion Lex is responding to that and trying to say, well, hey, Jabari, since you deal with Kemet, um, you calling our stuff mis misogynistic, then what about yours? You know, that's that's basically what's going on here. 
And so we, we have to understand misogyny is a hatred of women. Now, no one, no one in a right mind should be able to claim that that there was a hatred of women in uh, Kemet. OK, so on on the on the straight meaning of what misogyny is a hatred of women. You can't make that claim when it comes to um, to Kemet. I don't think I don't think anybody in the right mind would would uh, dare to do that. Um, when we have several instances of, uh, women in very prominent positions of power. In fact, uh, we have women who were Kings, uh, such as Ma'at Kara, AKA Hatshepsut. All right. And then we have others who were, uh, co-regents before their sons became of age to take rulership and so on and so forth. So I don't think that a case can be made for misogyny in ancient Kemet. I don't think anybody in their right mind would, would do that. But I just want to you know, emphasize that misogyny refers specifically to a hatred of women. The word is formed from the Greek roots uh, messian, which is to hate, and geni, or gene, for women. Each of these roots can be found in other English words, both common and obscure. Gene helped to form the word gynecologist and androgynous. And a messian can be found in words such as uh, messianism, uh, hatred and fear or intolerance of innovation or change. And then misandry, which is the hatred of men. OK, so I just wanted to kind of, you know, establish what misogyny is and how that doesn't that doesn't uh, pan out. OK, so the mistake that Zion Lex made one is that um, as a beginner, he's not aware of the grammar of the language. And it shows by his assumption that this is a, a one word and it's not. It's a phrase. It's a genitive constructed phrase, an indirect genitive at, to be very specific. All right. And so um, now a, 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 a true student who is who is not confined to reacting to being attacked, you know, by someone else in your beliefs, a person who's coming and actually just trying to learn a language. They would they would also note note this word. This is also coming out of Budget's dictionary. This is a word, uh, nebit hey. Okay, the word hey means husband. And nebit is the feminine form of neb, and neb means an owner. The word neb means to own or an owner as a person or a person who possess. And it's often translated as lord. And so the feminine form of that would be lordess, but we don't normally say that. Most people will will change that to mistress. And then I don't uh, recommend translating as mistress because in our uh, society today, a mistress is is um, is more so believed to be a man's side piece, you know, somebody's mistress. And so I, I um, steer people away from utilizing that uh, translation. It's more so a female owner that's what the word nebet means and so what this is saying this is another phrase it's not one word it's two words nebet hai which means owner of a husband it's a feminine owner of a husband so if zion lex point of bringing up hemet chai which is a man's wife or, or how a man owns a woman then what about this word where a woman owns a man so you, you can't argue for misogyny when there is another phrase used in the literature where women own men. You can't have it both ways. OK, so that was something that I pointed out uh, to the brother. I pointed out the brother Asari Motep pointed out and I believe the brother Sanjeti also pointed this out to the brother. All right. And so, you know, it's all in the spirit of teaching and edifying people. All right. So we can't use these as examples for misogyny. Now, if he wants to make an argument for misogyny, then he has to use something else. And that's fine. But he cannot use these examples or his example uh, to support that case. All right. So this is a, a outright refutation of using this as evidence for that case. OK, this is how you refute evidence. Hemet Chai simply means a, a man's wife. Nebet Hai simply means a was a woman's husband, a married woman. It's just that simple. 
And like I said, it's no different than, than how we use it today. I would say, hey, um, Brother June, uh, meet my wife, so-and-so. And when I say my wife, you will never think that I own her. And the wife will turn around to her friends and say, hey, hey, so-and-so, uh, meet my husband, so-and-so. No one would think that you're saying I own, you know, as far as property, a thing to own as far as property is concerned. All right. So so we, we have to be careful uh, with that. All right. So that's that issue. So does anybody have any anything else to add to that particular issue? On the panel. Any comments, anything to add? Yeah, I, th I think it was strange, especially since we know um, when you read um, uh, the literature from Kemet and um, you know about uh, women, you know, holding high positions, um, you know, not just um, of like um, uh, has a set shoot, you'd have um, women physicians, you'd have um, women with own properties and all that stuff. So even to just uh, bypass all that and, and, and try to um, make a claim of something that does not fit within a culture, I, I, I don't know, it just didn't make sense. Because um, at that time, um, in, other, in other cultures, um, women were not really, women, women were actually property. It was only in Kemet where women were actually held in high position. Yes, that's correct. And so we have to um, understand. Now, what I want to do real quick, because I like to um, demonstrate and show people um, and not just talk. OK. And so what I'm showing on the screen now is I'm showing an actual, actual screenshot of my response that the brother Zion Lex uh, hid by blocking me and or deleted. OK, because at this point, I don't know which of the two he did, but the point is whether he deleted it or hid it. Other people can't see it. So it's the same outcome. All right. And so this is a now it may be small on the screen. So I'm going to move it around. I'm trying to blow it up because I want people to see it. And um, so this is my response on his page that was deleted or hidden. And um, and so. I quote him, he says, you are aware that one of the ancient comedic names for wife is Hemeti, etc. So I quote him. And then this is me speaking here. So I said, this narrative is false and we must be careful making claims as this, but it's easily fixed. So, so I'm telling the brother, hey, we got to be careful, but hey, you're wrong, but we can fix this. OK, so far, nothing disrespectful. I'm saying nothing disrespectful to the brother at all. And this is my first time commenting on his page ever. All right. I go on to say this entry in the second line and, and by second line, I'm talking about right here in the middle here that you all can see with my cursor. This entry in the second line is showing two words, Hemet, which means wife and Chai, which means man. This is a phrase called a genitive construction and means a man's wife. The phallus classifier is for the category of man. It's attached to the to the word for man. The seated woman. Let me go back to show you all. The seated woman is the determinative for the word Hemet. So we have a we have a determinative here and then we have two determinatives that classify this word. All right. Because they're two separate words. All right. To go on. The phallus symbol classifiers for the category of man. The inverse is Nebet Hai which is two words in a phrase also in genitive construction. Nebet means owner or possessor and Hai means husband and means a woman's husband. This is no different than today's usage of possessive pronouns to indicate a, a husband or wife. When people say things like this is my wife, so-and-so, or this is my husband, so-and-so no indication of anything extra needs to be implied by the word property. And then I go on to say, for those reading along, I always encourage people interested in learning Egyptian culture or any culture for that matter to learn the language of said culture properly and seek help of a competent teacher. Now, there's nothing in this post, this comment of mine that warrants it to be deleted and or me to be blocked. 
And that's why I went on Sarnetta's platform to ask the brother, um, why did he do why did he do it? Because I don't know the brother. And you know, I, I hear, you know, people talk about him and, and rumors and stuff, but I don't I don't go by that. I, I, I rather, you know, observe people myself and have my own experience with the person. And so I just wanted to know why why was my comment deleted? And so nothing he said in response could justify deleting my comment. Now, to his credit, he apologized on air and said, I think he said that he'll unblock me. So, you know, if that's the case, then that's all good. But deleting it or, or preventing it in the first place is problematic. All right. But I just want to point that out because I mentioned these things earlier. All right. So I don't want anybody to um, get anything twisted here. All right. So I just want to show everybody this was my comment. And it was from this comment that I got blocked. So. When I when I'm able to start paying attention to the comment section of of our, our video now, I want to know you all's feeling. Do you all feel I disrespected the brother or was anything disrespectful? And, and mind you, you know, I've seen brothers go at it. I've seen people go at it on, on a sign of this platform. If if anybody takes my words here as as being disrespectful and stuff, then, you know, we have to question a person's sensitivity. I mean, the level of sensitivity, you have to be like extremely, extremely sensitive to find something in what I said here as being offensive. OK, so I just want to point that out. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, it, nobody has any other comments uh, here, do we? No. OK, and for those who, who may be watching. And if it, if it looks a little blurry, you know, on the YouTube videos, you can set your um, video quality to, to 720p. Uh, just as a side note for those who are watching, because it may be blurry. I know some people have said that in the past uh, before. All right. So let's go on to the third thing. So that was that was one and that's two. So we're going to move on to the third. And so for the third, I'm just going to show you. Um, um, well, let me show you this first. This this connects to the second one. The one that we just covered about the wife. Now, this is this is actually Zion Lex's page right now. All right. So I'm sharing his page. And so he has a follow up post to the um, to the one I just covered. Now, mind you, in the chronology of events, he posted the one about the wife that I just read. Um, and then I posted something to to make to correct him to to, you know, to inform him about. And that was deleted or that was hidden and I was blocked. So he comes after that and posts another post, which is what you see on the screen dealing with the same subject. And see, this this is where the immaturity shows and where, where I don't encourage it and I don't I don't participate in it. So if you can see him start out, he says the conscious comedic community was big mad. Now, see, that's that's something that that a really a high schooler would would do to instigate or or whatever the case is, because no one is mad. And 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 to kind of put that out there, it's, it's just really it's a little too playful, you know. And so I just want to point that out. You know, like I said, people, you know, everybody's not the same, but I just want to make sure that everyone understands, you know, how we roll here and how I roll is that I don't participate in any any of that kind of uh, immaturity. And stuff like that. When it comes to these kind of things, you know, it's time for for fun and games, and then it's time uh, to keep things uh, serious and um, educational. So he goes on. So he says the conscious Kemetic community was big mad when I showed misogyny in the very language of Kemet. So as I showed, he did not show that. So obviously, he didn't take my correction. I mean, he he erased it. So now he's not responsible for it. All right. Um, so it's not it's not seen by anybody. OK, so then he has the language of Kemet. He has a uh, Ren Ni Kemet and that's incorrect. It should be Rodney Kemet. That extra water ripple is not uh, there. So that's an error. But that's you know, that's a minor thing. Um, then he says they tried their very best to neutralize the damage through romanticism. So I decided to go a little more in depth today on the subject, on the same subject, misogyny in the language of the sacred literature of Kemet. Now, notice he said they tried their very best to neutralize the damage through romanticism. Now, if you are a follower of Zion Lex and you're reading 
his page like this, you see how it's influential and it's, and it's not in alignment with reality, with the facts, because nothing that I said, at least, was romanticizing anything. It's an issue of of grammar of the language and knowing the language. So he was corrected on all counts. OK, if people who want to know more about that, you know, you can sign up for classes. I'll be I'll be happy to to um, enroll you in a class and teach. You know, I have classes going on right now, but I'll be happy to take on um, new students, take on new students all the time. All right. If you want to learn about genitive construction, indirect, direct genitives and what they entail, by all means, you can ask me whenever and, and whenever, uh, whatever. All right. No romanticism. So now let's go on and we're going to go through this. Um, live I mean you know directly so first he says one of the words for women or woman in Medu Nature is Hemet to show that she belongs to a man oh excuse me to show that she belongs to a man he puts this in caps the term he has T uh, here but it's actually Chai so that's another um, um, transliteration error on his part all right is added is added to it which designates man with a phallus emitting semen now number one it's not added to it it's a phrase it's two separate words okay so it's not added to the word as as becoming a part of the word it's a separate word it becomes a phrase it's a genitive constructed phrase all right just letting everyone know that's what it is all right and he said belongs to a, a, a man. Now, let me say this. If I say if I say the word. Um, the king's return from Asia. When I say that the king's return from Asia. That does not denote property, although I'm using apostrophe S to show the relationship of the return in relationship to the king. The king's hat or the king's return. We have to understand how how in semantics, how how these words are are expressed and how they're used. OK. And so this is something that we learn when we actually learn the language. All right. And so I just want everybody to understand that. And so um, those who criticize the Bible say that women are regarded as property and seem to solely exist for breeding. Yet the very same critics are practitioners in a tradition whose very word for wife it includes an erect penis. And it doesn't. So let me just show you all again. Let me go back. And I'm going to use I'm going to use Zion Lex's own um, uh, post from Budge's Dictionary, if you look at this first entry right here, this is the word hemet. You do not see a phallus there for that word wife. This is the word that means wife. Hemet. Hemet nesut, wife of king. Or we simply say queen. Hemet chai, the wife of a man. Or we simply say a man's wife. The bottom one is hemet nesut that I said first a king's wife or we say queen Hemet by itself is wife there is no phallic symbol on the word for wife okay I want to make sure that's very clear to everyone there's no phallic symbol on the word for wife all right I can't be any clearer than that but if we go back to what Zion Lex says and misses misinform his followers he says yet uh, the very same critics are practitioners in a tradition whose very word for wife includes an erect penis, chai emitting semen, which clearly suggests that their tradition saw women being useful for. That is not so. The Zion Lex, Zion Lex has no um, uh, stance or, or enough information to come to that conclusion by looking at a dictionary entry of a word that he misinterprets as one word. And so we have to be careful, and this is why I, I, I strongly encourage people like him and others to um, 
take time out to learn first before they open their mouths and share information because you you open yourself up to have to be to be um, vulnerable for errors and to misinforming people okay and you know we all are in this to learn and so usually in a basic initiatory system or learning system when you first start off you're told to exercise caution or be silent silence and caution are encouraged among neophytes among any discipline whether you are the white belt first level of a karate uh, a journey in martial arts um, when you're first taught martial arts at a, at a, at a, at a basic level your teacher is going to tell you hey as you're learning don't go try these moves on anybody <laughs> you're going to get you know you're going to find yourself in trouble you know um, same thing with anything you're taught to exercise caution be humble and be silent when you start off these journeys and that's what I encourage as well and and as a result of not doing that and not being disciplined to do that this is what we see here that the brother Zion Lex does he misinforms his audience and his followers about these things here all right so to go on, it says, but it doesn't end there either. The term hemet is also cognate phonetically with the term for female servant, which is also hemet. The only difference between a female servant and a wife is orthographic, which means in writing, because they are spelled differently. Yet when speaking the language, they are pronounced the same. So let me highlight this for a second, because I want to point this out. OK, for those who are watching now, when it comes to the way that we pronounce ancient Egyptian words today, none of our pronunciations are ever claimed to be historically accurate pronunciations. The reason why is because the, the hieroglyphic writing system that's, that we refer to as Sesh Medonetra, it did not document its vowels. So the vowels of these words are unknown scientifically we do not know which vowels come in between these consonants when you look at the hieroglyphic writing system you are looking at nothing but consonants okay and so what he's saying the word hemet in term in terms of this first one and then the hemet the second one they're spelled different and they most likely sounded different based on a different voweling of the word. And so what he's doing, he's saying um, these are cognate phonetically. Now, first of all, there's no such thing. A cognate, a cognate of a word are two words that come from two sibling words that come from the same parent. Hemet as in wife and Hemet as in uh, the second one. They're completely different words. So you so it's it's a it's a it's a um it's an error to even use the word cognate in this same sentence here. OK, and so if, if he wants to it, what he's trying to say is that the way we pronounce these two words today, Hemet and Hemet, there is called homophones. This is what he means to say, not cognate phonetically. That's there's no such thing as that. A homophone, if you look up the word homophone, homo means same and phone means sound which means they sound the same. So today, Hemet as in the word for wife and Hemet as in term of a servant who happens to be a female, they sound the same today because that's how we pronounce uh, it today. That's it. All right. Now, another thing to point out, this is simply the feminine form of Hem. The word Hem is means servant. And hemet also means servant. It's just the feminine form of it. So his logic or, or the point he's trying to make doesn't stand because the king himself is called a hem netcher, a servant of the deity, hem netcher. So men are also servants. Women are servants. So we have Hemet, you know, we could be Hemet, it could be Hemet uh, Sekhmet, a servant of the deity Sekhmet, or whatever the case is. It's a complete different word from wife, 
Hemet as in wife. That's why they look different in the glyphs. Okay, so 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 out of ignorance, the brother is making these claims, which is just simply showing, you know, the his lack of 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 knowledge about the language and how the language actually works. And that's understandable at a beginning level at beginner stages. But the point that I would like to stress um, to the brother and to everyone that does the same thing is to hold off on trying to make arguments, hold off on trying to make claims, hold off on trying to to, uh, you know, do this kind of of uh, back and forth fussing with people until you actually learn what it is that you're trying to learn and preferably from a competent teacher. And I will always keep saying that. So let's keep going. Now, he goes on to say, ask yourself a question. Why does the word wife and female servant sound exactly the same in the language? Again, I want to point out it doesn't sound exactly the same in the language. It's only assumption because we in 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 order for us to pronounce these words today. You have to know to pronounce words, you have to use vowels. And so what Egyptologists have done is that they have conventionally agreed to stick an E in between every consonant. This is why we say such words as seneb, which means health. The only consonants we actually see is the S, the N, and the B. What will be equivalent to an S, an N, and a B, there's no vowels there. So we put vowels there to be able to pronounce it because you can't pronounce that word. Try to pronounce S and B without a vowel sound at all and understand this the word vowel itself it comes from from the word vocalis which means the voice so vowels are the voice of language consonants help shape your uh, place of articulation and manner of articulation vowels are actually the voice of language remember that and i'm repeat it. consonants help shape the place and art and manner of articulation and vowels produce the voice of language. You can't have a language without vowels and spoken language. That is written languages. Some language written languages do not document their vowels. Arabic being one. Um, of course, they have the different dot system um, nowadays to to assist with that. But so Sesh or the or the hieroglyphic system is not unique in that regard. OK, but there's no vowels visually seen. All right. So I just want to point that out. And the determinatives help to to uh, disambiguate those those situations. But let's continue. So he says sound exactly the same. He says, is it because the ancient Egyptians saw them as the same? We'll see. Even the word for female cow heifer is also hemet. Again, that's a different word. Why on earth is the comedic word for wife the same as the word for heifer or female cow? Hold on, it gets better. See, so so out of ignorance, he's building up this thing to his audience. And see, this is this is what, you know, I don't encourage. I, I, I don't encourage this. And I, I tell people to stay away from doing. All right. Because it's not part of the learning process. This does no good to any kind of learning process to do this. Because Hemet as a cow, Hemet as a servant, and Hemet as a wife, although we pronounce them the same today, they are completely different words. Completely different words. Just like in English, we have bear and bear. We have bear the animal, then we have bear as in, as in holding up something. To bear the weight of, of, of something. It sounds the same. Those are called homophones. All right? Look, look that up and you'll see a whole bunch of different homophones that exist in all languages. All right. So let's go. Let's keep, continue on real quick. Um, well, not not to make this long. Let me go to what he shows here. Um, and I'm not sure if you all can see the whole the whole picture here. So he shows. Um, uh, Hemet Netcher, which is a priestist. Because Hemnetcher is a high priest, the king is called Hemnetcher, and a female equivalent would be called Hemetnetcher. Okay, and that's what I said earlier, and he, he's showing an example of that. 
Um, and then we have uh, Neturet, uh, Netur Net actually Neturut, plural and the feminine, and then Hemut, plural and the feminine, which are um, women dealing with the different um, um, feminine deities, plural. Okay, and then we have here, he shows example of Hemet here with the cow. And so he's just showing this. And then here, here's a servant or slave. Budge has hen with an N, not even an M. But it's actually hem with an M, as in Mary. And then Hemet will be a feminine. So we have servant, servant. Here's the masculine, here's the feminine form. All right. So I just wanted to show that because because he decided to uh, block my response to his original post and then post this as a secondary response. And so what I what I what I uh, um, say to that is that that's that's really disingenuous and not fair to an audience um, to block a correction and then move on still with the misinformation. And so that, you know, it tells me the kind of character that the brother has. Like I said, I don't know the brother Zion Lex. And I don't judge people based on what other people say. So now I'm developing my own experience with the brother. And so far, my takeaway from dealing with the brother is that he's disingenuous. All right. Um, in terms of his 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 manner of sharing information and uh, what he his his interaction with me. All right. So that's my uh, personal takeaway at so far. Now, that could change because we're all you know, we all um, we all can grow and learn and so on and so forth. So let me go on to the third thing. Uh, does anybody have anything to say and add to that? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so let me go back to his page and um, and let me find the one for Shalom. So now I'm dealing with the third claim about Shalom. So give me a second to find it on his page here. This is the third thing that I um, corrected him on. And by being blocked, I'm not sure that these other two corrections even posted. So let me get down to the Shalom or the Shalom. Uh, bear with me one second. I don't know why it's taking. Okay, here we go. Uh, not that one. Well, I wanted to address this one too, where he talks about the, um, the ultimate source or the ultimate creator being a man and so on and so forth. Maybe I'll do that in a different video because I don't want to make this too long. So I just want to address these three things and call it quits. Um, all right. No, that's the Nimrod one. That's, is that twice? Where's the one for Sharon or Shalom? Ah, here we go. <clears throat> all right so can y'all see that on the on the panel can you see that yo okay all right so what i want to uh, address is this one so i'm just going to read it as as he posted it so he says well 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 it appears that the word shalom was also a salutation and greeting which was used in ancient egypt kemet as most already know the word hotep which means offering or peace is currently used, also used as a salutation or greeting among comedic practitioners. But the literature shows that the ancient Egyptians said Shalom, which is spelled, and then he has the uh, glyphs to spell it out. Um, and finally, with the, with the uh, M, and let, me, let me expand this real quick so that we can see everything that what he said. Uh, with a determinative for greeting. So he has the so he calls this a, a determinative for greeting. OK, with the arms, a man with an arms with the arms raised. Um, now, he says most when reading it, pronounce it as Sharma, forgetting that the glyph for R, the mouth is rendered as an L when the original spelling of the word had an L. Both in old and middle kingdom periods had no L sound. So when transliterating words with an L. They use the mouth glyph, which is a substitute for the L sound in classical Egyptian writing and literature. Then he says, knowledge is truly power and in fire. So what I corrected him on here is that he's misleading his audience. OK, 
The, the word shalom or shar, sharama or sharma, however you pronounce it, it was not a greeting by the ancient Egyptians, the Remech, the people of ancient Kemet. Again, I will repeat that. The word shalom, sharma, or uh, sharama, however it's pronounced today, was not a greeting that was used by the ancient Egyptians. Okay? This particular greeting, and then he shows uh, the Budge, Budge's Dictionary entry. And so what this, what this is proving as well is that, see, see, this is what I mean by people should learn from a competent teacher. Because uh, you, you would be advised by a teacher that you can't go by dictionary. You can't learn by dictionaries. You have to learn the morphology and syntax of a language. And then you have to learn how the writing system dealing with ancient Kemet. You have to learn the writing system and language simultaneously. And you have to learn this morphology and syntax to really understand. You, you, you use the dictionary as a rough guide for um, general meanings of words but you can't use those to make claims okay so what he's showing here is budget's dictionary again of the entry for sharma okay and then we have several various spellings of it and this is why i say budget's dictionary um becomes problematic um to a beginner only a person who's seasoned and really kind of you know have um the grammar and everything under their belt will really be able to utilize budge and not uh be handicapped by how budge did it did the dictionary all right so what i want to point out here is that budge gives citations for where he's extracting these words from so everyone so you see this word uh Sharm, sharma here then you see thes 1204 Thes period 1204 is an thes is an abbreviation and 1204 is a page number for this citation, this text that Budge is pulling this from. Rug I H the second or two, page 125 is a source that Budge is pulling this variation from. So these are sources that Budge is pulling from. And a person who is really trying to find out, a real student would look up these sources and see the context in which these words are used. And when you do that, you'll find that this word is not a greeting used by the ancient Egyptians. They're used by foreigners who got beat in battle by the ancient Egyptians. And the word is to sue for mercy. So when they use the word, it's a Semitic loan word at that. In the text, it's a quotation of foreigners saying, peace, peace. I don't want to fight anymore. It's the equivalent of, of, of raising the white flag or laying down your arms, your weapons. And so Budge defines it as to greet, to salute, to offer salutations, to salam, to sue for mercy. Compare the meanings of the Hebrew word shalom. All right. And so the nuance here is that although it means peace, but what kind of peace? It's peace in the sense of fighting has occurred and then someone loses and then the lose party gives up and they ask for peace. That's the context in which this word is used. So it's not a greeting general or otherwise by the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians did not walk around greeting each other. Shalom, 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 salam, salam, assalamu alaikum, shalom lek, shalom lek. They did not do that. So anybody inferring that that's what's done, which is what he's implying with but by the by the way that he wrote this, is false. And so this needs to be corrected, which is what I'm doing now and I did try to do before. The word Sharma or Shalom as used in ancient Egyptian text is in reference to either fighting that ended or in some uh, context similar where somebody is begging for mercy from another person in power. All right. And so what I'm going to do. As I always try to do. Is I'm going to show you all 
primary sources for just that. So here are, are um, two primary sources uh, for that. One is a very popular source that's used by uh, uh, people of, of Judaism, people who follow the Abrahamic uh, Judaic tradition, uh, be they Hebrew Israelites or call themselves Jews or, or, or just Hebrews, whatever. Um, so the top example that I'm showing is a um, facsimile copy of the Mernapatah Stella a.k.a. the Israel Stella, as people like to call it. All right. And so what I want you to show, if you if you know anything about the Myrna Pata Stella, the Stella in and of itself is talking about the results of battles, fighting. And towards the end of the Stella, it talks about um, the defeat of various different people being defeated and so what i want to draw your attention to is the the third line from the bottom and i hope you all see my cursor matter of fact let me put a um an arrow so you all can see it because i'm gonna point this word out all right so i want you all to see this word here it's in the third, the, the third row from the bottom, and we're going to look right here. Okay, this is the word Sharma here. Okay, we have the, uh, and uh, let me, matter of fact, let me show you, oh, let me go back to, because um, I want you, uh, now, now I know this may be small to see, so let me see if I could, I could blow this up first. In fairness to you all, I know that's probably small and you all are probably. Um, Y'all going to get on me for it being too small. So let me see if I can blow this up first, because I like to at least show you all and I don't want to leave you all hanging. So let's see if I can blow this up. All right. Hopefully it doesn't get too blurry for y'all. All right. Now I'm going to bring the arrow in and show you all the word here. So this is the word Shalom or Sharma. All right. And so this is a primary source where the word is used. And notice this is at this is in a document in the form of a Stella that talks about defeating enemies and the enemies suing for peace. Or that they lost and they want to cease and desist from fighting. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the entire Stella. And I, you know, I mentioned the Stella's name, the Myrna, Myrna Pata Stella. And or the Israel Stella, you can look it up, look up. There's various different translations available um, today online for free. Look it up and look towards the end. When you read it, read it. I, I suggest you read it in its entirety. But when you get towards the end of the of the document, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about, because these last these are the last three lines within the document. And so um, you're going to see this particular word being used for um, suing for peace. All right. And I just want everybody to understand that this is not a greeting. That's a general greeting that Egyptians were saying to one another. We, they weren't walking around saying assalamu alaikum or shalom lek or shalom, shalom, mashalama and none of that stuff. All right. They were not doing that. In, in Egypt, they addressed each other with Enej Herek or ETM Hotep, ET. There's several different greetings and shalom was not one of them. All right. In terms of a general greeting in literature, you'll find it being used in this particular context. OK, so I wanted to show you all that one. And let's go back to this one. This is um, a hieratic, what they call a hieratic papyrus from the time frame of Ramesses. This is a Ramesside papyrus. And in this uh, particular papyrus, if you can read hieratic, you'll be able to see that this right here is pointing to the word as well. Sharama. Shalom. And it was also used in a battle text where Ramesses defeated enemies. OK, so I just want everybody to understand that the context in which the word Sharma or Shalom was used in was used in particular um, during uh, the the aftermath of fighting of some sort or some kind. In that regards, it was not used as a greeting. 
These are the things that uh, the brother Zion Lex failed to mention in his post in order to imply, as he says, let me go back to it. So we, I don't want to put any words in his mouth. Um, I am saying the implications that he's using. He starts off with with well, well, well. So he's like a discovery. Well, 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 behold, look at what we have here. We have this word Shalom. Being used by the Egyptians as an as a greeting, but Kemetic practitioners use Hotep, which means peace or offering. Now, as a side note, let me just let you all know why people use Hotep as a greeting. The word Hotep originates from a word that means an offering and it's and it's an offering of food or sustenance. It could be drink or food. And the reason being is because in ancient times, they didn't have um, quick modes of transportation um, at all, you know, other than uh, boats on the river and so on. Every, you know, you had to walk very long distances to trade or to even visit people. And so what happens is that when you start your journey to travel to visit someone, by the time you reach the destination, you are famished. You are thirsty. You are hungry. And so when the person greeted you and welcomed you into their company, they greeted you with an offering of food or drink. The food or drink is called hotep, hetepu itself or hotepet, the actual food and the actual drink. And so when they offer it to you, they say eti, which means welcome. Here, take this food, hotep. That's where we get that from. It's a greeting in, sen in the sense of, of restoring someone's uh, vigor when they come into your company. So today we use it metaphorically that when you come into my company, that I'm going to supply you with some kind of substance, substance, be it educational, be it informative or be it, you know, my my presence, my vibe, whatever the case is, I'm going to share it with you. So here, take this hotep. So ETM hotep is what we say today. Welcome in peace. That's why we say what we say today. We're not going to say sue for mercy because there's no fighting going on. So we're not going to use the word shalom or sharma, even though in the Semitic languages, they don't use it that way. Even though you have a place called uh, Jerusalem or Jerusalem, which is a, a um, you know, a, a, they say the city of peace or the dwelling or the domain or the abode of peace. All right. And so you have people who are the king of peace, like uh, Malik Zadok or Melchizedek and so on and so forth. Uh, brothers fighting and then peace has occurred and they call this the city of peace or the domain of peace or whatever the case is. You know, they have their own way of using all that stuff. We don't use it that way. All right. So I just want to point that that out. And that's the third thing. And that's the final thing that I wanted to address for everybody and the audience here. All right. So, you know, let me just show this again. Uh, again, on the Mer Mernapata, uh Stella. And then this is also a uh, matter of fact, this papyrus here that you see on the bottom is the Harris is termed the Harris papyrus It's in the British Museum today. And so if you want to look that up, look at the Harris papyrus. Um. And look it up. If you can read Hieratic, if you or if you're a student of Hieratic, then hey, by all means, look, look, look at the papyrus and you'll see uh, the line, the end of the line that I'm pointing to here with the green arrow. You see that it's the word Sharma um, and then the formal uh, glyph in the Murapata Stella in the third row to the bottom. You see the word Sharma and also you see the word. Um, let me get back my cursor there. Uh, where we at? You also see the word. Um, uh, uh, peked, which which means to to lay down. So it's saying is laying down in peace. You know, like like you lay down and give up, like you prostrate, you prostrate in peace. You're submitting, and notice that everything I'm saying, you prostrate, you give up, you submit. Isn't that what Muslims say? Uh, the word salam means to submit. Is salam or Islam? The religion of peace or to submit a Muslim, one who submits. That's what they say. 
They don't even say it's one of peace. They say one who submits to the will of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum. They're saying, you know, they, they greet the two angels with, with, with submission. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Mashalama. Or shalom lek. Mashalama. So understand that that's what's going on. And that's how it plays out here. It's not a greeting. All right. So anyway, I don't want to make this too, too long and start being redundant. And so now I'm going to look at the um, if anybody on the panel has something to say. And then also I'll take any questions from the from the chat. Um, if you have any questions, type them now because I'm, I'm, I could pay attention to the to the chat at this point. And so I want to um, entertain anybody's questions. All right. Um, and if it's and if it's overwhelming, you know, I don't mind people coming on the panel. I just don't want to make this video too long. But uh, does anybody on the panel have anything to say? Uh, what's up? This is June. I just want to say, Dua, thanks for that. But it just uh, goes a lot to what we stress about. Um, two things being good character and proper methodology. And that boy, uh, Lion Lex, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Zion Lex, he could, uh, I mean, I don't know if he's doing this intentionally, but if he could straighten up and have better character and a more sound methodology, he could save himself from a lot of these mistakes. Um, it seemed to be some ulterior motive to his whole, his whole scheme of, of doing things. But that's why we uh, stress proper methodology and good character. So um, it's, it's a sad situation for him but uh for the rest of us we could just keep emphasizing that and working on that okay anybody else See you. Go, ahead. go ahead go no 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 go ahead no i was gonna say i think they addressed everything that needed to be addressed so i guess you can add on to it though yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I think that um, there's nothing wrong with being corrected and, and, and just being a student of something um, and not being a rush. Like I had to learn through the course, still learning through the course. Like you don't have to jump out there and make those claims that you're actually making um, with the, the intentions that you have. I just, I just, you know, like little, little stuff like, you know, the the problem I had outside of the ones that have been addressed is the one about the Christ when he was in the museum and he was uh, Christ and he was trying to say it meant, you know, Christ before Kemet and so on and so forth. But the, the word he did not translate had a coffin uh, determinative at the end. Um, and I, I think there was a mistranslation there not to nitpick at, at the work. Um, like you said, we applaud the brother for taking the initiative to try to learn something, but it's clear that he has to take a step back. And uh, if he's going to be serious about studying the uh, the language, um, then he, you know, there has to be a, like you always state, Sabre, it has to be a paradigm shift at some point, studying the language and reading the literature and the text and, and uh, understanding the remit, there becomes this point in your studies that there is a paradigm shift. And it's imperative that he... He, you know, if he can set aside those differences and actually take a class and be in a, a classroom setting where he can sharpen his sword or whatever he's trying to do, that he then would re totally respect uh, the uh, the sesh in its entirety. Period. But that's it. Yeah, and um, I just want to point out. Um something too so you know in the beginning i i kind of gave the back the back uh context of my phone call you know my discussion on sonata's platform today and um and again i only went on the platform to to ask the brother or really i i wanted someone else to ask him why did he block me from his page after i um corrected him and see and my and my intention of asking that is that the brother comes off as now you know like i said i've, I've heard you know I, I hear what people say about the brother and see i'm the type of person i don't i don't allow other people's opinions to shape mine you know i i always give you know i try to be unbiased and, and allow my own experience to 
to educate me uh, with someone. OK. And so. So I don't have this preconceived notion about Zion Lex, who he is and everything like that. Um, I just do it based on people's behavior. So so, you know, um, as far as I've seen him interact, I haven't seen him be, um, you know, disrespectful or anything towards me other than trying to get back at Jehudi Ma'at where he was trying to say, you know, he uh, he infernos or or does something to Jehudi Ma'at, uh, who is a student of a known plagiarizer or something like that. And, you know, that 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 needs neither here nor there with me. Like I said, you know, I don't get into the immature uh, stuff. And so and so when I was pointed out the the Hemet Chai uh, 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 mistake, I thought I could correct the brother and the brother would welcome it. And so that's what I did. So I just wanted to know why he blocked me or whatever, because I just want a confirmation because I'm a, I'm a loud person to to dictate their behavior to me. So if he blocked me, then that lets me know that that the brother has alternative alternative motives and other reasons for learning. And it just confirms that, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm using him as a teaching moment for others at this point. I don't debate people who are not even at the level of of bringing something to the table worth debating. I either teach people, you know, and I share uh, Dr. John Henry Clark's sentiments on this, you know, where he says, um, I only debate my equals and all others I teach. I'm not claiming to be John, Dr. John Henry Clark, but I share in those sentiments and I and I, I behave that way. I don't go around debating people who they themselves are beginners or haven't taken time out to learn a subject matter that maybe I am more proficient in because it's a waste of time. I'd rather teach that person because what ends up happening, because I'm a, I'm a trained debater. I've, I've, I've debated on amateur teams in college. And what happens when you debate someone who is not sufficient in the information while you're debating you end up teach you, you you have to teach them while trying to refute them and 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 it's unfair to the audience to do that and so i don't engage in that and so i'll teach and so to the brother zion lex you know he can take a class i don't mind teaching him he could take my class and i will teach him and and i will make sure that he's sharp but if he doesn't want to do that and he wants to make these claims, then it's my job to make sure he doesn't misinform the public. Now, I know he has an audience and whatnot. He has an agenda. But, you know, in terms of what I see and I'm like I said, I'm not going to chase down everything. I don't have the time. I'm not going to sit around and chase every mistake people make. But when I do see them and I do have the time, I will correct them. So the brother Zion Lex was wrong on all three accounts, on all three of these claims. Um, the misogyny claim is not uh, doesn't stand the uh, shalom as a greeting does not stand and then the mark being the biblical nimrod nah that doesn't stand so on all accounts he's wrong and we addressed a couple of his claims before and i've seen another video before where he's talking about the laws of ma'at and he's trying to break down the paradigm heru the, the portion where um where the laws of ma'at come into the judgment scene and whatnot and he was just wrong and so like i said you can't, can't you can't chase down all these claims but if a person is really humble and genuine for the people, then they will understand their weakness and slow things down and, and, and take time out to learn first. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I see we have um, Brother Sanjeti on. So, John Sanjeti, you want to make any comments before? Um, I, I'm going to take some questions from the, from the chat, but you, you can go ahead and comment first. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. All right. Um, you can text everybody. <clears throat> So, uh, earlier, um, you know, I really wanted to address some of these things because I think one of the things that, you know, really concerned me was when, you know, our brother started misinforming people regarding the relationship of women in Kemet, in ancient Kemet, and this reflects on how we treat our women. And... And it's a shot at our work, ultimately, you know, and it's a very, it's imperative that in the community, that if the women are attacked, misrepresented, or anything of such to make them feel or perceive 
um, being uncomfortable or what it may be. It is the job of the men to step forward and to make sure that women are protected. And that's how I perceive, you know, this thing about women being property. Okay. That is not what we're doing here. That is a, a very sharp misrepresentation of the text and it, and it appears very deliberate and and brother comes across as if he's teaching people something, you know, and we should not be fooled by someone who is, you know, trying to pacify you because that's what I felt um, was going on when the brother first came on. He was trying to pacify me. Right? Now, these, these, are, these are political type tactics that we should not fall for. So, you know, you should be able to recognize when someone is attacking you. So just because someone is, you know, feeding you sweet food doesn't, you know, but they have ill intention, you still have to recognize it. Mm. So, you know, that's why I approached it the way I did and spoke to the brother the way I did because he needed to know that everyone is not fooled by that. You know, and, you know, you're not qualified to teach anything about metanetra. So we take this seriously. And this is, this is, we practice these things. We use metanetra to help inspire our lives. So it's, it's not, it, this isn't something we're playing around with. You know, and mm-hmm. you don't see any of us going to the Hebrew language, of their language going into their temples and their places in the world and misrepresenting them. Now, you know, I'm not talking about people who just want to, I'm talking about people who are actually practitioners of the culture in its reconstructed form as we have today. And that will include people who are studying metalection. Because um, uh, one of the brothers had made a comment earlier, I'm not sure which one, but I really like how he reflected on its research and character. And I like how, you know, how the students, and this is one of the new job students, uh, is reflecting back what we're teaching. And these are things that we were taught. And these things work. When we talk about Ma'at, you know, in, in my class, as well as the Shore of Wujau's classes, you know, Ma'at is built into the structure of the language. How you write, the grammatical rules, all of that is ma'at. As well as we use it for character. We talk about order and structure. Order is the word ma, and we we deal with structure. This is not something we're playing around with. This is not a YouTube fact. So you know when people are making these claims like this, this this is this is an, this is not good, and you know we're not going to just let you do that. You don't get to do that. Exactly. It, you know you don't have a prerogative just to um, make up stuff. You know on this ring and now if you if you like to do that with the biblical narrative, that's fine. Nobody's stopping you, but don't come over here with that. Leave that. Stay in the Bible in the Quran. Keep that over there. That's if, that's what you, if, that, if, that, if that's what y'all choose to do, we're not stopping you. We're not seeking y'all out. We're not out here looking for y'all. Because we're too busy studying the text over here. And we're doing just fine without you. And and for our Hebrew practitioners, and I'm talking about the sincere brother, and I'm sure y'all are doing just fine without us in that regard. And we're fine with that. Yeah. So, I'm going to have some more to say, but, you know, I'll pass the mic. <laughs> no, nah, that was good. You said a lot. And and um, unfortunately, see, I, I had missed your uh, engagement with the brother on the on Sinai's platform. So I didn't even know you were on until uh, I popped in. I popped on. Um, I, mean, I was in the chat and, and you were gone and they said you were on. And everything so i was trying to actually uh rewind it back to see you know just kind of get some pointers of what was being said and whatnot but but you know I, my intention was just to ask the brother why did he block me 
from being, you know, he rate, you know, hit the comment uh, and everything where I'm trying to correct them because, you know, like I said, I give everybody a chance. And so, you know, as a teacher, if I see mistakes, I'm just going to treat everything the same. I don't care what skin color you have or who you are. It doesn't matter if you're if you're right or you're right, you're wrong, you're wrong. So the brother was sharing it mis misinformation. I was just correcting the brother. And uh, and that's how it happened. And so but yeah. And so, you know, just just for the listening audience, though, I, I know that in our conversation today, I know the brother Zion Lex was interested in uh, going to Sonetta's uh, studio and and and. I guess talking about it again and he want wanted me to call in or whatever the case is and stuff. And so make sure you all share this video with him or, or he probably watching now or, or whatever the case is that, you know, I don't do the, and the son that asked me at the end, he, he said, you know, uh, do I do the base? I told him, no, nah, I don't, I don't do the base. Cause I don't, I don't see what people are doing as the base. There's people just fussing. And so I told him, I said, I'm not going to look for something to disagree with people on just to, just to, you know, do that. I said, if somebody disagrees with me on anything that I've said or teach and they have a disagreement, then, you know, I'll address it. If they if they, you know, frame their disagreement in a in a more mature, professional way, then, yeah, I don't have no problem um, addressing that and whatnot. So I just want everybody to understand. But I didn't I don't really see any questions in the um, in the chat. Uh, oh, so Zion, I do see Zion Lex in the chat. So I want to say welcome to the brother Zion Lex. And if you came late, you know, check out the whole video. Uh, since the brother Zion Lex is is watching now um, and he may have just popped in uh, just as a brief summary. Again, what I did tonight was I addressed the three claims that I originally addressed on your page, um, you know, and basically reiterate what I said about that for the corrections. And um, let the audience know that my inquiry was on why was my correction deleted or me being blocked, which subsequently hid my post. And then after it was hidden, you made a second post about Hemet uh, Chai or the word for wife to continue misinforming people. So, you know, so hopefully tonight you got you you were able to understand. So go back and listen and learn what was said and then adjust accordingly and we all you know we all can learn and um and and grow all right so i just want everybody to to uh understand that but but in terms of uh debating and stuff like that you know um i haven't seen any any real debates pr pr my, pr um, primarily on any of these platforms and i and i come from a background of debating like i know what debating and i have a paralegal background i know what debating looks like and i know what it all entails and what its function is for. And that's not what we see. We see a bunch of people fussing uh, based on misunderstandings, not really debating an actual issue uh, through logic. And people understand debating involves, you cannot get around this. Debating involves argument theory and logic. Without an understanding of argument theory and logic, you're not debating, period. You're not debating, you're just fussing, talking at someone or each other so until you understand argument theory and logic and can frame your arguments based on those principles that are that are under those domains then then you know you're not actually debating it's like trying to play basketball but then you, you never dribble the ball you just walking around with the ball like yes you have a tool called a basketball in your hand but you're not playing the game of basketball so yes people argue one against each other and we calling it debating but that's not really debating all right so i just want to make sure that that's um pointed out and why i don't engage in those kinds of debates and everything and at this point mm -hmm. I, I rather debate in in, in in writing anyway like people got to have to write for me because because you know you got to put some time into it you know what i'm saying so that's 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 the bottom and line. that um again I, I don't have personal Ill feelings for the brothers island. You know, it's it's just that I understand that from what I'm looking at and many others is it's a point of interest. And what it looks like to me, and one of the priests that I had a dialogue with earlier after the show, is that it looks like you have some Hebrew brothers in, in this particular case now who is interested in Kenneth. And, and it's, it's almost like 
you, you want to kind of come to the side, but it's like you're afraid. So you still got your foot, you know, in the, in the Hebraic thing, but you really want to come over here, but you're not really sure how to, you know, really engage or, or what, what would be your place. Okay. And, and I, and I understand that that, that could be an uncomfortable space to be in mentally, you know, but at the same time, you know, people will, will engage things in such a manner that it's familiar to them and debating and being, um, uh, doctrinally aggressive. That is the way of the Abrahamic faith. So this is, this seems to be why, you know, our brother is approaching, you know, uh, you know, Meta nature the same way, but you're dealing with two different paradigms. And what we mean by paradigm is a model or a train of thinking patterns. Okay. Cultural norms that have structure and the structure of, of what, what we're calling African centered thought, if you will, is different than the Abrahamic paradigm, which is what? culturally structured thought, okay, the pattern of the culture is different. So you can't, you can't operate in the way you do in the um, Abrahamic tradition. And, you know, so we keep telling people that it's not the same, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and the students, you know, that are, you know, on the line with us and in the chat, you know, these, mo most of them are Wuja students, you know, and, you know, I come in and I support as well, and I have students as well. You know, they, these brothers and sisters have spent time, time, they've done assignments, they've done homework in class assignments. You know, they, they've made mistakes, they've made corrections, you know, we, you know, they've interacted with each other, they, they, they built with each other. We look at tech. And, and go through things line by line, very meticulously. And that's you another. Know, so, uh, mm -hmm. just, just want to say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just want to say that's that's an important part that's missing with with quite a few people is the philological aspect of things, where people will um will grab a hold of dictionaries because a lot of them are free. Budgets budgets books are are um, beyond copyright. Um, so they're free, f freely floating around the, on the internet. You got Mike, Mark Vigas dictionary is free and so on and so forth. People will grab a hold of dictionary and they'll understand the basics of um, the uh, uniliterals or monoliterals. And then they'll proceed to go through dictionaries and try to look up words and everything and utilize that. And um, but then that's it. And they'll formulate opinions and arguments based on that instead of actually endeavoring to to learn the language, the morphology and the syntax. Um because you don't know a language until you know it's grammar. And so by them not doing that, they don't they don't have the full um, background to to be able to make any uh, stances and claims. And they just have to understand that. Now, people sharing information, you know, that's that's fine. But you have to understand your strengths, you know, and um, and weaknesses with that. And so what's missing is a philological aspect of things where people who are who are already competent enough in the language, now we can actually read text. And so we, we read several different texts of multiple genres of uh, ancient Egyptian texts. And we start comparing, we start seeing patterns, we start understanding, you get more of the culture in you um, that way as well. And so that's what's missing from a lot of people when they try to argue for and against uh, Kemet. And the moment that you bring up a text, you ask them, well, OK, you're talking about a word. Show me, you know, give me an example of a text that uses it. And then they fall short and they can't. And then when you point out, point it out, then that's a learning experience for them. And they, sh they should take it and, and learn from it and grow. And that's basically what we do and what we're doing here. So like I did with the word Sharma, or Sharom, and you've done it before, too. I, like I, I pointed people to your um, I, I actually couldn't find it on your page uh, where you address the word um Sharma or Shalom uh, Sanjay. So maybe, I, you know, I, I tagged you in my post. Maybe you can link your your original post for that because um, uh, I couldn't find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got to find it. Yeah, I got to find it. It's, it's like an old note. So. 
Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's back in the day. This this is stuff, and people don't realize that we we've been doing this for quite a while. Like we're not we're not like new comers to to these topics, and we've seen it re- repeat over and over again. And so it, it gets mm-hmm. it gets uh kind of you know redundant for us, but we know the value of 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 teaching you know of people coming across you know coming along fresh and new, and so we could take some time out. But um, but I'm trying I'm trying to entertain some 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 of the questions in the chat. So let me um, if any of y'all on the panel see some questions that I may have missed, cause I'm cause I don't know why my my screen is. is the brothers on Lexus asking to join the panel. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to add also that um, hold on for a second, sorry. Hold on, who, who's uh, who's speaking? Cause I'm not even in the speaker. I'm just on a call. Jody, my eye was speaking. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hope and I was going to say to um to the brothers on Lex, it's not it's not a personal attack on you personally. It's just attacking the claims you made. So um yeah, yeah. Just usually the meme is put person. on the on the video. It's just like when you're writing a paper and you have if there's a claim that you have to address, then you have to um mention the person that the claim comes from. So it does not really mean that um, it's addressing Zion Lex, it's just addressing the information from Zion Lex. So having your name on the video does not qualify for an invite, but you can definitely be invited, but that's not a ticket for an invite per se. Yeah, let me let me just answer this question. So, so Zion Lex says, I haven't done a single video on you, Wujao, yet you have several on me and never bothered to include me in the dialogue. How is this genuine? So let's make something very clear. Um, you know, like Jabari always like to say, Jabari said, let's be clear, family. But um, let me make something very clear that the video is not about Zion Lex. I don't know Zion Lex from anywhere at all. What I am addressing is a claim that happens to originate from a person named Zion Lex. OK, Zion Lion Lex. So my video is not about you, brother. It's about a claim you made and it's in writing. We do it all the time. If I read something in a book, I don't go seek out the author every time or the person and have them on before I can speak about it. That's not a prerequisite to address something. Okay, and so in terms of the issue of genuine, um, we had a phone conversation earlier and I asked you the questions that I asked tonight. So the way I'm doing this here is very genuine. And I had a genuine spirit in trying to correct you on your page. But on your page, you chose to block me on. And then on the Sonetta platform, you referred to me as little man. And that's very disrespectful, although I didn't say anything about it. But I know your kind and I know the nature of people like you. And so I don't engage in that. But I just want to point out the fact that I did acknowledge you called me little man earlier and, and to try to belittle me. But I didn't say anything at the time at all. So when we want to speak about genuine and things of that nature, let's make sure that we are not dwelling within a house that's made of glass, brother. All right. So I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. And so this video is called Welcome to the Sabite Dome. And for those who don't know, the word sabite is the word for instructions, teachings. And so the, bon- the, the dome part is our play on Terradome or Thunderdome from the movie Mad Max and the Thunderdome, where people come into this dome and hammer out issues. And so we're bringing your claims within this environment. And so addressing the claims made by Zion Lex, it's not about Zion Lex. So let's just make that very crystal clear. And that's how we roll and that's how we do things. Now, if you want to join the uh, the panel, that that's not a problem at all. But don't mistake that the fact that we are addressing your claims without you being present, that is disingenuine or disingenuous or whatever the case is. All right. We're not going to sit here and wait to address you verbally on something that you wrote. All right. Now, you didn't. Uh, try to contact me before deleting me or blocking me from your page you could have inboxed me brother you didn't do that so 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 let's not 
pretend or 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 fake the funk or do any of that kind of stuff right because around here we're mature around here we're professional we don't get into that stuff i'm not from new york i don't do the 125th back and forth fussing none of that stuff all right so so i can be missed with all of that kind of things there it is and um yeah um let me make a comment too uh, with y'all on that and you know earlier uh you know brother lex and uh i guess he's he listening now you know you know he says you know i come to you as a humble student okay you know that is inconsistent with the behavior and you know we, we don't do the the sloppy back and forth or because you're speaking softly or uh, trying to use uh what's the word i'm looking for uh disarming kind of vocabulary as if you're sincere and professional but your behavior tells us differently like that's that doesn't that doesn't work here that works other places you might do that on the street you might do that with people who are just starting off people who are seeking knowledge and they don't really know you know their place yet and it's a shame that people do that to beginners but you know we're here to make sure that people who are seeking knowledge who are sincere but they don't know where to go because you got all this information all over the place all of you look like they know knowledge but some people don't and they're not able to distinguish we're here to show everyone this is how you distinguish so so brother when you did that you know i took very i, I was taking notes and i took notice of it so yeah. you know mm -hmm. for future reference please unless you really are sincere please don't say that because we're very focused and we're very meticulous and i just we're, want we're not we're not you're not your average cat Okay. Yes. Like, and this is this is why, and then I'll pass it to you in a second, which out. This is why every time people have come to debate us or argue with us when they don't have the sincerity, they fail each time. For the past ten years, it's been like that. So, if if you really want to learn. And you want to be a student, then act like, it. you know, like we're not going to sit here and pussyfoot around and try to be nice to you and all that kind of stuff because this we're not playing games here. We're not, we're not doing this for popularity. This is probably why we're not all over the internet like that because we're doing work. We're, we're teaching classes. This is serious because we're dealing with people who are facing you know, a large, significant part of life around the stuff. And so that means that we have to be accurate because people are depending on us to be accurate. That's why we're taking this seriously. It's just not for debate. Yeah. So, go ahead, Wu Jia. Now, I just want to address um, the real-time comments. Um, I posted the link for everybody to join. Anybody in the, in the chat can join the panel. All right. Uh, the only thing that we ask when you join the panel is that we practice very normal and common, mature communication etiquette by not cutting each other off and not being disrespectful because I don't tolerate it here. None of us tolerate that here. And you'll be kicked off without explanation. You'll be kicked off first and then we'll explain after. All right. Simple as that. But I want to point out that the brother Zion Lex is asking to come on the panel. And I don't mind that at all. But what's strange to me is that a brother will block me from his page but then asked to come on this show or this panel and so that that also adds to to my observation of the brother Cause like i said i don't know the brother so i'm allowing his own behavior to dictate my perception of him and so far my takeaway from him is that the brother is disingenuous and i know i know people like him and i put him in the same category and and you know i deal with people accordingly so I understand that, you know, he's in an environment of 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 constantly defending his faith, but he needs to leave that up there with those other folks and not deal with me in that regard. And I'm, and I'm trying to teach him how to deal with me, that I'm not attacking his his belief or his Bible. 
You don't ever hear me talk about the Bible. All right. I've been there, done that. I don't talk about the Bible. I don't. I'm not the ones that go around claiming that, you know, the Bible stole this and plagiarized this, that and the third and whatnot, all those kinds of things. And so I think and I mentioned this earlier on Sinai's platform. I, I, I said that I believed the brother Zion comes and deals with me with baggage because he thinks because I focus on Kemet that I'm like other those other folks he deals with, you know, whether it's Shaka Ahmos, the brother Polite, the brother Jabari or whoever else that he he's always defending himself against, you know, and I try to just let him know that, hey, don't do me like that. So all the little, uh, you know, little man and all those other kind of comments, you know, I just see that as very immature and everything. And, and it doesn't work like, you know, I don't like, you know, he doesn't know me and I understand that. But none of that stuff works like I'm not going to you're not going to push any button. I don't have any buttons to push whatsoever. I deal strictly with information. You're either correct or you're not correct. You're accurate or not accurate, period. You know, so so that's what I get to. That's what I get down with. And so on and so forth. So, so I gave the link out. If the brother um, is is still in the chat, I gave the link out. You're you're more than welcome to join. Anybody's welcome to join uh, the chat. I gave the link hey, out public, and I don't see hey, anybody hey, that. that I'm not laughing. Uh, okay, I don't. Sorry about that. I don't see. Um, let me just say something. I, I don't see anybody that uh, joined the chat. So if you're if y'all have a problem joining the chat, let me know. All right, because I put the link out there, but I don't see anybody in here. Um, I, I know there's a delay from from when we talk, when we speak. Oh, so he says, peace. I no longer want to join in. All right. So that's fine. That's cool. Okay. But but let the let the record know and let it reflect and let it show that uh, the brother Zion Lex is more than welcome on the panel. Although he blocked me from his page and it really had no reason to. Um, I went over that earlier. Uh, so let the record show. So tomorrow, what what we're going to expect is the brother Zion Lex, as he said in the chat, he's going to address me on Sonetta tomorrow without me being present, which is fine. I just think it's um, unfortunate for the for the public to uh, misinform them and not not have a um, a person on on or involved in the conversation that actually can um, explain and break things down and which is why we're doing what we're doing. All right, and, so and, you know, and, it, and it, that is sad, Joe. Um, you know, because you know, here you are. We have bona fide. There's two instructors on this line, and 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 a number of of proficient students. You know, who have who have demonstrated themselves. You know, who are um, just to qualify to explain many con concepts in, in the area. You know, here we are. We're right here. You know, the brother requested to come in. You put the link out, and then he changes his mind. Yeah, just real you quick, know, what, what, Sa Sanjay, just real quick, because because I just want because mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you can see the comments. I'm just look, watching him comment. The brother's still here, so oh, again, okay. so now he's not in the in the on the panel, but he's still in the chat. So I want to just reiterate this: the brother Zion Lex requested to come on, and we granted the request. I posted the link for everybody. As soon as I saw his request, I put it out there. Matter of fact, Jehudi Ma'at brought it to my attention that he's requesting to come on the panel. And so I grabbed the link and I posted it into the chat as soon as I could, as fast as I could. So the brother is welcome to come on. But now he's saying he no longer wants to be on the panel because he says that he thought that we were different. Now, see, that's the game. And I just want to emphasize that the victim game it's not work. It doesn't. It has no place here. Either you're gonna come on or you're not. Either either you have something to say or you don't. Like I don't like. We don't have to get into. I'm not gonna babysit someone's uh, feelings and everything. So the the whole point of me giving the link out is so that people can join the panel. Uh, now he's asking, is it possible to call in? Yes, Sanjeri has called in. So so um, you can call it Sanjay I don't know how you 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 called in and whatnot but it um the if you click on the link did you dial a number or you clicked on a link when you called well in? well um I took the link for the number mm -hmm. and then then of course you have to put your um I guess the ID number so 
I just memorize and never you know, dial to it. Right. So I'm so, going to the ID. So you get the phone number. There's ID number that you have to give to the to the voice line. All right. So so I gave the link. I mean, you know, let me let me give let me give the link again because you know, like I said, I you know, you know, the brother. The brother uh may have have us confused with some other folks um which i think that that's what's going on all right so so this is the link all right if you're on the phone if you're if you're watching this youtube video on the phone just just tap the link and it will instruct you on everything you need to do and if that's not good let me see if i can find the um direct number where you come in and i just want everybody to understand that um Okay, here's a New York number. It says one tap on mobile. Let me put this in. It says dial by your location. And here's the meeting ID. All right, so maybe this will help out for those. So, I'm, you know. Yeah, yeah, the meeting ID. Yeah, I might. Yeah. Doing this. Okay, Here, here's another way that you can uh, call. It says dial by your location. It has 1646, a New York number. And then the meeting ID number is right there. So, there you have all right so all right so now no no we'll, you know so we, we can stop playing victim because no one's a victim here no one's attacking and no one's uh disrespecting or anything like that see those those trigger words and keywords don't work around here uh so i gave yeah, the, i gave right. i gave the number all um right, so that's it yeah yeah like like we're like let me talk uh, listen here bro you know we're we're, we're all men here you're a man we're, we're men and you know, like my thing is, if you want to call and have a discussion, like just just man up on it, bro. Like it's cool. Like after this discussion, you know what I'm saying? It's no hard feeling. You know what I'm saying? See, here, here's, here's something that's missing. You know, and again, none, none of us are perfect. Everyone has their challenges. I have my challenges, which I, I we all have challenges. But you know, this environment is is producing beta males if you will and it makes it easier for beta males who are who are men who are men or becoming men who have not found their inner security yet they're you know these people who are followers who don't take initiative that alpha males or men take initiative these are leaders these are men who go through the fire, you know, who take on challenges, who are not afraid to make mistakes and then they face them head on. You know, if, if you listen to motivational speeches by Eric Thomas, Les Brown, you know, do that. So, so all this running, running away because now here's the insecurity because you're not secure in your perception of things. Like, no, come on, head on with the people who really deal with this, and let's do this. Not do this like let's destroy you. Let's go do some corrections and, and, and bro, come through this fire. Stop, we'll stop running. Come through the fire and earn your respect in this arena because you're trying to come over to the metal nature arena. Now I'm sure you got your respect in the Hebrew arena. Not a problem. In this arena, you have not earned your respect, but you're trying to. You're trying to get a position that you haven't earned. Over here, you, you can't YouTube your way into this. And that's the thing about Metanetra. You can't fake Metanetra. Metanetra doesn't allow that. And yeah. we're not going to allow it. Exactly. Because we're making sure that we have students and, and that the audience are educated so that people can't just get away with wrong information and they know it's wrong. So, you know, yeah, and that's come a, on, come on, bro. Come, listen, look, man, come get this work. Not get this work like we're gonna beat you up, but come, come get the correction. Stop running. Yeah, um, because, because yeah, yeah. One, one more thing, my bad, with y'all. One thing, best believe we got work too. No, so don't get it twisted. Okay, we've got the work. I've got work from Infibishi. I've gotten scolded by the Katie Hama before. Okay, and I'm open about it. Okay, bro, you will never get. And 
when it comes to Melvin Nestor, you will never get as embarrassed as I did. Okay? Because I, when I went through initiation and I got work in the museum in front of everybody. And, then, and of course, this is like umpteen years ago. Well, I got that work. So, you know, if you're not doing anything, you didn't get done yet. So, my bad. Go ahead with y'all. No, nah, I just wanted to, you know, I'm just reiterating some things. I'm, I'm letting everyone know that I posted a link. Anyone could join. So don't don't be timid. Don't be afraid. We don't bite. We're not we're not. The I'm in party. the link right now. I'm not sure if anyone can hear me. OK, yeah, we can hear you. So, uh, All right. so Please, I'll allow you to finish. I don't want to interrupt you. OK, yeah. So um, let me just let everyone know who who's watching that um, anyone could join the link. It's not you know, I'm not specific to any any particular person. I posted it in a, in the chat. For anyone to join, I can get up to 100 people in here. The uh, only thing I ask is that, you know, we don't uh, cut each other off because it'd be unfair to the public or to the uh, to the archive of the video. So um, so I gave the link. So, Brother Zion Lex, you're here. So welcome, ETM Hotep. Uh, not Shalom, but we say ETM Hotep. And uh, welcome you to the panel. And so you can um, give your comments on what you were saying in the chat. So it could be addressed in real time. So now, but my first, my question to you, though, just, just as, a, as a start, is um we started this video about an hour or so ago so i don't know if you had a chance to watch the whole thing and 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 you can make some comments about what was said so that would be my only question to you is um is did you come into the to the discussion late or did you have a chance to see everything we were talking about first and foremost thank you for allowing me to come in i definitely have some issues getting on zoom because when you go on zoom zoom asks for an id that's what took me some time. That's why I asked you for a call in number. There wasn't any games played, as you noted. Um, I didn't catch the beginning of your dialogue. Um, I'm a father. I'm 40 years old. You know, I have twin daughters that are 14. I have sons that's 10, and I also work today. In fact, when me and you dialogue, I was actually working. I spent four hours on the phone during the start of the interview while I was at work, something I shouldn't have done, but I really love what we do in the community. So I absolutely did so, even though I knew I could actually get in trouble doing it on the job. So saying all that to say, brother, um, I definitely did not catch everything, but I caught um, what you responded to, which is as soon as you saw me enter the room, that's literally when I entered the room. So I don't know what was said. I don't know what was touched on, but I do know that the video has my name in the title, which someone sent to me. I'm actually subscribed to you guys because I value your work and I follow your work. And um, when I referred to you earlier as little man, it was out of frustration. I don't know you personally to throw any personal attacks. There's a lot of frustration because um, I'm not sure if you get this, but I get this a lot. I'm attacked a lot by several people in the community, not just people in the committee community, but even the Hebrew community. So at times out of frustration, yeah, I may say things, but, um, I always ask people who meet me one-on-one -on -one to give me the opportunity to show you who I am versus what you see me dialogue with other people. When I apologized to you earlier, Wujawa, that came from the heart. That was sincere. That was nothing for starting the TV. And there's nothing for me to gain right now calling you on your show, cut on your platform to speak with you. I'm gaining nothing through that except trying to reach out to who I believe is my brother. We have some differences of opinion. We all are trying to use our views on ancient spiritual texts to affect our people in real time. But there tends to be, on all sides of the playing field, some romanticism and some misinformation that hinders that growth or that evolution or that effect in real time. I may be playing a part in being a person that's incorrect at various times, especially when I'm delving into a lane which is not entirely mine. So you would be correct when you correct me on various things that I may have said incorrectly on the metanet, and I appreciate that. The only thing that I ask, especially seeing that we don't know each other, is that all correction, if it's brotherly, it should come from a brotherly space and place. So I, I don't expect you, really, because I really don't know you, to value what I'm saying, but I do believe that you both are intelligent enough and genuine enough because I really do watch your show. There's times that I don't even comment and make it make it known that i'm watching your show but i'm always watching i'm a person that i genuinely believe that every person we meet is our teacher and this is not for your show this is not for sonata this is something that i know at 40 years of age being born 1979 november 7th i perfectly understand 
everyone that we encounter is our teacher. Everyone that we encounter is helping us on some level to grow in our evolution. So I don't have a problem saying to you, as I said earlier, even to your brother Sanjeti, my brother Sanjeti as well, that when it comes to Metaneta, I am a student and you would be the teacher. But even you being the teacher doesn't always make everything you say right. But I will swing the pendulum in your direction because I believe you have more time and more experience and more years of study. And because I believe you don't know me, and because I believe you've seen me in various um, scenarios act a certain way, you may have a preconceived notion of who you're talking to. But until you actually dialogue and speak with me directly, none of those notions are real and genuine. Um, so what I said earlier still stands. I apologize to you, Brother Mujawa. I'm not sure why you continue to bring up you know, what was said because I, I genuinely apologize to you. Um, okay. There was nothing fake in my apology, again. I'm only calling in now because someone sent me this video and I'm earnestly trying to gain an understanding of what it is that you have to say with regard to areas of correcting me. I, like you, agree that if we're going to address someone, we should address them one on one. You just said just now, and I hope I'm not overstepping my time. I'm going to try to wrap it up really quick. You just said just now that Brother Zion Lux is going to be appearing on side of the TV to address me. And I'm not sure what, what that's about. It, it would be better if he addressed me. But this is exactly what our dear brother Sanjay did today. Um, I'm not sure if it, if it was his design to come to Sarnetta to deal with me only. But, you know, we all know Sarnetta. He's a good brother. But for the, for the sake of how he promotes his show, he entitled the dialogue Sanjay addressing misconceptions that Zion Lex made. So it appeared that he literally came just to address me. So what I'm saying to you, Brother Wujawa, and I also know that brother um, Sanjeti is hearing the claims that you made in, in terms of me going on Sonetta to rebut you and you not being there. That's exactly how I felt today when Sonetta sent me a link to a video where my name is being mentioned and my claims that I did make on social media are being mentioned, but I'm also not there to address it. Now, let me tell you this because I respect genuine scholarship. If we can at some point agree to have a dialogue as brothers and hold off, I don't even need to go to Sonnet. I would rather dialogue with you brothers versus going to Sonnet because I absolutely know, and even if Sonnet is listening, he knows how I feel. I know when we go to that platform, it becomes a monkey show, uh, for lack of a better term. It becomes a, a battle of the wits, and that's something that I'm definitely not about. And you may question whether I'm not about it because you've seen me there time and time again. But for me, I know that that's not my heart. That's not the space that I'm in. So I would rather not even go there tomorrow. I would rather address you brothers on your own platform at a time that we can all agree to rather than even keep it there. Because I know if we keep it there, Sonetta runs his platform based on contention. And I don't really believe we're going to gain any effective ground if it's contentious. And, I, and I'll wrap it, my point just to that. Okay, so let me... Um so yeah, and I appreciate all, all of your words, um, but you, you said a, you said quite a bit. So um, let me just okay. let me just respond to a couple of things that that I feel necessary. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm glad that you know uh, you shared with us that you know the fact of your age and the fact that you're a father um, and all that. That's 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 good. I think you know every every man should be proud of fatherhood and things like. I'm, I'm a father myself of three. Um, I am your senior. I'm older than you. Um, Okay. And, and everything but that's really neither here nor there um because you know what we all, all of us do what we do and we can still um maintain our our households and everything like that so i, Absolutely. I, I always Absolutely. i always commend anybody who who's who does that type of type of thing um on the point of romanticism like you said and, and i said earlier that we don't know each other and um i don't know if you can point out an uh issues or instances where I I do the romantic romanticism thing, because I'm 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 not known for that, and I and I do not like when others do it. So I I'm I'm very um, cautious about romanticism of any right. uh, culture and things like that. So I don't think that applies to me. But I do understand when you say it, what you mean, because I have seen it. Um, another one is that um, otherly place in terms of 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 my um addressing your claims on your site now like, like you said you you said you didn't watch our you know beginning of the show at the beginning of the show right. at the beginning of the show i kind of laid the the context of why i'm doing the show 
which I include some of the things you just said. I told everyone that I don't know you and that I came to your page as a result of your your post being shared to me because I'm not a, um, right. follow, a follower of your page. And so I only went there to offer correction in the spirit of um, me being a teacher and a brotherly correction because the way I even worded right. it, I shared with everybody even how I worded it. I said that the claim is uh, not true, but it's easily fixed. And so then I proceeded to to give the information on how to fix it. And that was with the um, the wife, the woman um, situation. So that was it um, as far as that goes. And earlier I acknowledged that my belief, because I don't know you, and so what I what I told everybody is that I don't allow other people to dictate how I perceive people. I usually I do my best to to engage the person and look at their behavior and patterns in behavior. And then I come away with my view of a person. So I so I, told, I appreciate that. I told everyone that I believe the way that you kind of interact with me is based on you, you know, constantly being under the gun with other people. And I named, you know, such as Shaka Afmos, the brother Jabari, the brother right. Light, right. and so on and so right. forth. And because they are under the umbrella of comedic practitioners, because I focus on Kemet, you know, even though you may not consciously do this, you you may you know you kind of bring that get baggage into our interaction. And so I and I and I agree, brother Bujawa, which is which is the reason why I apologize. When you said it on front of the TV, exactly what you're saying now, I had to digest it because I realized what you're saying is right. Again, I'm not so proud or ego filled that I can't listen to my brother and my brother speak something that's true and I can't resonate with it. Everything that you're saying right now, you actually said on Sunday TV. And it was after you said it that I came and I said, you know what, brother? I apologize. There were some people that said, oh, he's being you know, disingenuous, but I don't have time to worry about what people think. That's not going to prevent me from telling my brother in real time, you know what, you, you said something that resonates with me and you're right. Because I, I have engaged this community now four or five years straight and I have been attacked and I have also attacked, I'm not a victim. You know, I definitely don't want to come off as, you know, design Lexus playing victim. I'm not a victim. I have been attacked and I have also done attacking. This is clear and I, I, I don't want to deny that. I don't want to play the victim. Okay. But because of that arena, yes, it causes me to be a bit um, cautious, maybe even hostile at times. And that's why I said, you know what, brother? I apologize because I've, I, in, in all honesty, I didn't even read your comment in full. And that's me being genuine. Now, mind you, I'm saying this and everyone who follows you can say, see, he's, he didn't even read the comment. Mind you, I already know what they're going to say, but I'm still admitting it. That's my humility speaking. I'm okay. telling you that I didn't even read your comment in full because I know how most people come at me from your community a certain way. But what I should have done, and you corrected me rightfully so, is Zion, I'm a different person. And I actually didn't come at you a certain way. And you know what, Wujabo? That's why I apologize, brother. Okay, so and, let, me, and again, let me say this. And again, my apologies. That's why I apologize to you. Okay, so let me say this. Uh, one, I accept your apology. Earlier, I didn't say that I accepted it because I wasn't sure what you were exactly apologizing for. And I, you know, and I don't, right. I don't, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't do the one or the other. So, so I, right. I do, I do accept your apology because, because it's clear to me that you, you get it at, in terms of my point with, um, right. with the fact that, you know, I understand. Now, see, I understand because I, you know, I'm not new to this. I've, I've, listen, I've, I've been, been involved with this kind of things for a very, very long time. And I understand right. and I act accordingly. So I know that people like you, you and people like you uh, have been under attack, your faith, your belief, your your scripture and a whole nine. I mean, I've, I've seen it through the years, like, you know, for a very long time. And so I understand that. And so that's the spirit of why I even asked on Sonnetter, why I asked you, why did you block me? Because I was surprised. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, what did I do? Um, right. because, because in my mind, in my mind, if you block me or since you block me and, and I, and, and depending on your answer to my question, then I was just not going to bother with, with your, anything you put anymore, period. Because, because I, right. I, I, I asked you as a, as, as to, in, in, to gauge whether I should continue to try to, um, cause I see it as helping because I know what I know. 
and I've been doing whatever I've been doing, just like you've been doing what you're doing. See, I, I would never right. come. I would never come to you and make claims about the Hebrew language or the Hebrew uh, or the scriptures um, in such a way to where I'm not coming asking questions for, for clarification instead of trying to debate and and you know to have one up on you and all this and that. See, I just I just don't do that. You know, just like you know, I don't get frustrated to where I say things out of frustration, and I know you know people do that. But that's how come I didn't I didn't respond to you calling me little man earlier. I didn't I didn't push any button. I I totally ignored it. I I heard it, but right. I didn't, you know I didn't say anything because that's that's neither you know that's not you know that's uh, you know I got tough skin. So but but and, so that's we're so in that's, agreement that's, on that. By the way, we're in agreement when I tell you that when I said that it was a low blow and it was a low blow that came from a low space. Again, I've definitely been on attack. Not only you, but even the Hebrew community. I'm a Hebrew that teaches that. Um, the Hebrew faith cannot separate itself from its African um, genesis, African origin. Because of that, you must understand that Hebrews attack me vehemently. And then when I come on your platform as a Hebrew, it doesn't even matter that I'm one of the Hebrews who respects and love Africa be simply because I'm a Hebrew. So it's, it's a catch-22 um, situation for me when I come on this particular platform, not just yours, but um, platforms that are comedic based because people assume that all Hebrews have this, I guess, and I'm, I, I don't want to use them, but I have to have this ISUPK view of the Hebrew Bible, which I must let you know is absolutely not the truth. Um, the oldest Hebrew communities have always respected Africa. The oldest Hebrew communities have always identified Africa as the source of our culture. I want to make that extremely clear. So 90% of the time when I'm on um, platforms like this, I first have to let it be known that I'm a Hebrew who considers himself African. Before I even was aware of Hebraic culture, going back to the year 1993, I found that I was I found out I was a Hebrew from my perspective in 1994. But if I go back to 1993, there's only two things that I know. My father's Jamaican, my mother's Guyanese, and because of that Caribbean background, we always teach that if you're black, you're African, period. And that's something that my father continually teaches. My father's a Rastafarian. He's not a Hebrew Israelite. He doesn't believe in Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite religion. He's a Rastafarian. As such, he believes that Africa is the source of all culture and heritage when it comes to black people throughout the world. And I've always had that as a part of me. And as I came into the Hebrew community, I fought to push that awareness because I definitely encountered, like most of you brothers do, Hebrews who don't hold that opinion. And I'll, I'll keep it short because I want you to engage me. This is the first time that we're actually, in my opinion, able to engage without being on guard. I feel as if we kind of broke some ice in the moment, and maybe we can engage each other without anyone feeling like the, per the, other, the other person is, is trying to get over in some way, somehow. Well, let me just say this, uh, you know, like this is, I mean, I don't engage. Like I, you know, I know I've been to New York several times. I'm not, I'm not from there. Right. I've never lived there, but I've, I've been to New York quite a few times, and I got a lot of people, friends that are from New York, and it's, it's a, you know, I see it as, as, um, a New York thing as well to kind of be in, in that kind of competitive mode that, that on guard type of thing. You know, I, I moved south. I'm that from, is true. I'm from D.C. But I moved south and down south is way more lax than even in uh, D.C. So but now this okay. is, but so so but this is a question I have now. Now. So this is my advice uh, to you. Well, let me ask you a question first. Well, let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you my advice first, and but I'm going to ask you a question it's because right. because um, now I didn't even know you had a Facebook page. So when when somebody shared that recent post. Um, I clicked on the link and then it was your page. So I, I took a time to actually scroll down and, and see some of the things you were saying that caught my attention because I'm seeing glyphs and stuff like that. I'm like, OK. And like I said earlier on some other show, I commend anyone who, who will take the time out to learn a language when they want to talk about a culture. Because because to me, um, culture and language, uh, language is the DNA of culture. So if you're going to discuss a culture, right. you got to deal with through the language. So I. Um, can anyone commend anyone to do that? But now, so here's is where I have a um, what, what, what caused me to raise an eyebrow with what I saw on your page is that and this this kind of leads into a question. Um, OK. So 
I know that you have taken time to learn, um, to start your journey learning about the uh, session meta nature, which is the hieroglyph, and then the language, and so on and so forth. But my question mm -hmm. is, what is your motive uh, in doing so? And and let me qualify my question because as I read your post, it it seems like you're addressing attacks, like you're you're doing it in a defensive posture, and and by doing it that way. Because of what I know about the language, I see that that's opening you up to make mistakes. And so okay. when, I, when I read your post, it's like you're like the one about the, the woman. You're, you're basically responding to Jabari, I, I believe, and and maybe others and stuff like that. And so as you're learning and it's not just you, but I'm saying as you're learning, you may be finding things as as sticking points. In, in a in a respond to an argument as opposed to just genuinely learning, you know, and, and, and that that provides different pathways on what you benefit from on your on your journey. Right. So so my question, you know, so so again, my question is, what is your motive for learning, you know, learning what you're learning and and do you realize or are you aware that that can handicap you if your motive is to um is to you know kind of respond in a defensive way and so on and so forth you, you number one you asked an amazing question and i'm actually honored to have the opportunity to be on your channel in this space answering that question first and foremost the, the focal point of my interest in learning the language initially yes was to be um in a position to be able to put myself in the know when it comes to anything related to Hebrews having any experience or any interactions in Kemet. Uh, most Hebrews, if not if not all, because I don't encounter much, uh, many Hebrews that actually read the Medinetto on any level, but so I, I think I can safely say all, even though I know that there's some, I'm still going to say all. Most Hebrews don't read the Medinetto. So um, what happens is we're literally at the behest of uh, those in your community to tell us what it says. And the problem is, and I'm sure you're very aware of it, of this point, not everyone who um, speaks of Kemet is genuine in their approach and in their heart. Not everyone is, um, if I could borrow for a second from the language or culture of Kemet, is Ma'a Keru. Not everyone is true of voice. Not everyone has a sound heart and a sound mind or good, genuine intention. So at times you may even find people who may purposely misappropriate knowledge and information just to throw others off. So I said to myself, the only way you're going to encounter truth is if you learn it for yourself. Me being a person with 21 years in Hebrew language and 26 years in the Hebrew culture and faith, I said to myself, I understand language perfectly. And I agree with your statement, by the way, that language is the DNA of the culture itself. In fact, Brother Ujawa, I have a book that's out right now that's literally called Hebrew, The DNA of Language Itself. And in the book, I go very in-depth by showing that you cannot understand the Hebrew culture without identifying and quantifying the Hebrew language. So we are actually perfectly in sync with that point. But moving on, I want to tell you this. You are absolutely correct when you say that if you're coming in to the language for the sake of rebutting claims or i guess an, an end game of destroying kemet i mean you're not seeing the bigger picture well Jao, i perfectly agree with you this is not for your show by the way if you ever actually click on videos in my channel where i'm actually being interviewed what i'm saying to you right now is what i'm saying in one-on-one -on -one interviews and you're not even there i always speak of a great love and appreciation for kemetic culture even now more than ever before because i'm learning the language there's things that i've learned about the culture of kemet simply by learning the language that makes me appreciate the culture that much more because there was a, there's so much misinformation in the hebrew community when it comes to what the actual people of kemet believed what they held dear to their heart and their minds and what was characterized on those walls and in their literature. Most Hebrews, and Hebrews may not like this, but I'm a person that I, I speak what I believe is my truth. I speak my heart. Most Hebrews don't have a clue about Kemetic culture. And this could be, um, you know, somebody could rip this right now and make 30 videos. I don't even care because I'm speaking truth. Most okay. Hebrews don't have a clue about Kemetic culture. I personally don't want to be that Hebrew. 
I believe as a Hebrew that we were in Kemet. I'm pretty sure most of your audience, maybe even yourself, doesn't believe that. But more importantly, the reason why I'm saying this to you is the reason why I believe that Hebrews were in Kemet, I believe that there was knowledge and information in Kemet that we stand the opportunity of gaining from, empowering ourselves from. I think one of the unique things about the Hebraic experience is because is that Hebrews were diffuse in several world cultures in antiquity that can attest to having Hebrews there. Now, I'm sure in your community, some may, most may say Hebrews weren't there, but other communities don't deny the presence of Hebrews. And saying all that to say, when you find Hebrews in so many diffuse cultures, what is occurring is the idea that we are both receiving and transmitting. So we are actually giving and we are receiving, we are learning as well as we are teaching. I believe that ancient Kemet had knowledge that Hebrews gained from. I do believe, in fact, that Hebrews went into Kemet and gained from the cultural, intellectual, and spiritual legacy in Kemet. Those are some of the things that I wish to envisage upon my own community. I actually went to the museum of which, you know, I believe you did comment on in brief, where I actually spoke of the word um, Christ in the meta nature, and you definitely critiqued it. And I appreciate your critique because that's how we grow. And I spoke to the Messianic Hebrew community, and I tried to show them that I personally believe that this is the origin of the word Christ as they are using it in their Greek New Testament. Because as far as I can see, this is the oldest attestation of this word. So my point, Brother Wujawu, in, in the most dearest spirit that I can actually bring this out, when I actually go into comedic culture, I'm trying to empower black people in this diaspora. Because even as a Hebrew, I perfectly believe that there are there is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in comedic literature that Hebrews can benefit from right now in real time, which is why dialogues like this is so important because aside from me getting on a platform like Sonetta, where the only question he wants to know is what I disagree on, me and you and others who are more proficient in our own lanes can talk and build upon the things that we do agree upon and perhaps possibly take those ideas, bring it back to the community, work in real time and try to affect change. And I'm going to close with this, and I, um, I'll absolutely give the mic back to you. I believe one of the things that made our brother, um, our dear ancestor, Marcus Garvey, so powerful is that, yes, there were people of different paradigms, and different views, but his spirit caused everyone to come together and use whatever ideals that they had within their culture to work towards the progress progressive forward movement of our people. And I say none of us are great minds if we can't take these great ideas in the cultures that we actually are practitioners in and affect real change in our community. Okay, so um, now I, I appreciate your answer because I was I was asking you what's your what's your motive behind you know why you learn why you learn and I ask everybody this I, I, even even right. when people sign up and take the the classes with me that's my orientation everybody can can tell you that I asked them to, you know, tell about themselves and why they're interested in the language and so on and so forth. Okay. So now, so this is my advice, just advice to you is that, um, is that while you're learning is that you, you understand. And, and, you know, this is where, you know, us being humble, all of us being humble and all of us trying to cultivate good character, we have to understand our strengths and weaknesses and so on and so forth. And so as I scrolled your page, Instead of me going through, I'm like, okay, wow. I don't want to seem like I'm picking and that I'm that I'm I'm one of the haters just because you're Zion Lex. And so right. and so and so I'll say this directly to you to you here now, that I would just caution you on while you're learning to not do the defensive response because because I think that that you're shortchanging yourself when you do that. Because like for example, um well, the woman thing was an example, and I don't want to repeat that because I, I, I went over that earlier in the show. But what I didn't go over is like, for example, you have a post about um, the cause of all causes being mas being masculine. And 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 like the way you word it is that you're you're basically saying that, OK, comedic practitioners say got this much to say about us. But yet right in their own doctrine, they got this, too. 
you know that, that and i know that you didn't say that verbatim but that's the kind of feel mm-hmm. that i get from from reading it and so as okay. you as, as you said just now though you said by by learning the language you have a more appreciation for the culture and you're learning a lot more and so i would implore you to continue that but while you do it i would just caution you not not to try to, not to engage in 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 that you know defensive back and forthness because you're going to shortchange yourself so let me give you an example with this so like for example you said the cause of all causes was ultimately a masculine energy but now i just want to explain this to you uh in in languages around the world specifically and Kemet in particular every single substantive what people call nouns um every single substantive in the language is either a masculine um, has a masculine grammatical gender or a feminine grammatical gender. And then some words exist in both. So you have one or the other, and then you have some words that can exist in both. The ones that can exist in both are seen as, as see, the Egyptian language doesn't have a neuter. But the ones that exist in both are seen as androgynous, for lack of a better word. And so the fact that nature exists also in the feminine should signal to to people that it was seen as as both and not so much ultimately okay it has to be masculine or ultimately it has to be feminine it exists in both and so so we a lot of people are familiar with particular particular nature nature uh or natural deities in the feminine such as sekhmet or set nebit hood uh tefnut you know all you know people could name a whole list of them and then you can list a whole sense of, of male specific deities. The word itself that represents this principle exists in both. And so we can't conclude that the ultimate cause of all causes is masculine when the, when the word used for the for the, for that particular um, high principle is exists in both. And so we have to we have to be careful not to mix that with with how the mythos was narrated. We have deities in the masculine, such as Nebuchadnezzar or Ra or Atum, doing X and doing Y and doing Z. So we have to understand the difference. And, and the only way you'll, you'll be able to, to pick up on the difference is through time and age of combing through the literature after, you know, learning the language and actually reading the literature for itself and understanding um, how words are used uh, by understanding the grammar and so on and so forth. I just want to show you that example because I saw your post about that. And so that's where I would kind of just point that out to you that you really can't make that argument um, about that because because the ultimate cause of, of all causes is unknown. And this is why you have the phrase of Amen, whose name is unknown, not even to the Neturu, because they're implying that you have this this unknownness and everything comes out mm-hmm. of the imperceptible into the perceptible. And so but that, that gets into a whole uh other long discussion but i just want to point that out to you because you're gonna cut your to me you you would be cutting yourself off from the wisdom by you know kind of responding to to you know these other folks and things like that and because of how how i'm reading that you wording your 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 uh post like that you know so i just want to point that out to you and that's a and that's a great point brother and let me first and foremost say i will actually take you to that advice and hopefully in real time you may actually observe that I actually am taking heed to advice. You're absolutely right. And um, I don't have a problem with correction because I believe that that's how we grow. In fact, I believe that I've grown tremendously in my own paradigm because I don't have a problem with correction. I don't have a problem with evolution. I absolutely believe that it's a natural uh, process that has to happen. So I want to say this. Um, you did catch the post where I spoke on nature. Uh, ultimately um, quantifying that which is masculine. But, but let me say this. Uh, we do know that there is a feminine term, which is netert, and that would be the feminine of netra. Now, in the Hebrew paradigm, the term Elohim is inclusive of both male and female. So on the flip side, my good brother, we have people in your community that you may not uh, p- possibly rub shoulders with or you know, may actually be direct students of yourself, but nonetheless in the comedic community or purport to be in the comedic community who automatically assume that the Abrahamic faith and its God is all masculine, 
not even realizing that the term Elohim is inclusive of both male and female element, even as quantified in the very first chapter of the text. The very first chapter of the text, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26, says that male and female were created in the image of Elohim, meaning that the term Elohim is inclusive of both male and female. And brothers like Divine Prospect, who understand the language, understand perfectly that the term Elohim, although it's a masculine plural, still is inclusive of the feminine gender when you understand the language. It is definitely a masculine plural, but the feminine gender is actually still there present once you understand the morphology and the syntax within the Hebrew paradigm and culture. So I'm fighting hard on the Hebrew end to show that what people who exist outside of the Hebrew paradigm are saying is not exactly true. I wrote an entire book, Brother Wujawu, and I'm actually able to laugh because uh, throughout, throughout our dialogue today, it was hard to laugh because it was more contention. And I'll, I'll, I'll take the burden and the weight and say maybe it was me that was more contentious. But I, I, I like to laugh when I'm speaking to my brothers because humor sometimes can, can um, act as a, a coding to, to get us closer to actually having a genuine dialogue. So it was hard to laugh earlier, but I catch myself laughing now. And what I'm saying is I wrote an entire book entitled Matriarchs of the Covenant where I tried to combat the misconceptions that many Hebrew groups have on the rule of women. I showed that women are, in fact, equal to men. In fact, there's an oral tradition that teaches that ten forms of speech descended to mankind and women inherited nine. The Hebrew tradition, especially the oral tradition, teaches that innately and spiritually women are greater than men. This is something that I pen in my book, Matriarchs of the Covenant, where I teach that one of the reasons why the snake approached Eve wasn't because she was the weaker of the two, for those who will acquiesce to the mythology within the text. He didn't approach Eve because she was weak. The, the snake, based on the mythology, um, is not thinking like man. Most men in general, or man on a whole, have this bully concept where we bully the weaker. The snake, or in Hebrew, Hanakash, is ethereal and purely spiritual and is not weak at all. And people who are not weak don't look for weak opponents to challenge themselves. Hence why, if you notice, whenever I'm on side of the TV, I always say, don't bring me no, no flimsy person. I can't evolve talking to just anybody. I want to talk to the great minds because even if they prove me wrong, I'm learning in the moment and I will evolve just like I've evolved from some of the critique that you've given me and I've been able to go back to the drawing board and correct and come a little stronger than I had previously done. So my point to you, Brother Wujabu, is there is a gap between what we know about one another, but I want you to be aware that there are Hebrews in the community that are trying to correct a great deal of the misconceptions that cause the gap between our community because I tell you bar none, most Hebrews you meet do not have an authentic view of what that text is trying to relate. Most can't even get past the um, symbolism within the text, much less any historicity associated with it. And there are definitely Hebrews in the community who are working very hard to bridge that gap. So I apologize to you and your community, if at times I come across like I'm bent on destroying Kemet, that is foolish. I don't think any African civilization stands to uh, gain any intellectual or spiritual ground by taking down another. I believe that the greatness of African spirituality is that we can all coexist with our ideas about this grand unified whole that we're calling the universe. And I'll end it there because I don't want to be too long. At the end of the day, this is your show. Okay, let me. Uh, I just have one more question, and then I think, um, brother Sanjeti, if he's still here, he may have had some nope, to, no um, problems. Kind of uh, dialogue with you a bit, and then I'll wrap it up because the show ended up being long, but it's it's all good. It's it's, it's perfectly fine, and uh, I think it's uh, beneficial for the listeners. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. I just had had it on you. Okay, yeah, yeah. So let me. So I got one more question, and then I'm gonna pass it to you, uh, Sanjeti, if you had anything. Um, so okay, another question. And I'm asking these questions because because you're here. So so you know, it's it's just a lot faster and straight to the point to ask you to ask you um, 
uh, some questions. But just a, 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 a comment about what you said, though. Um, I do, I do, I do see and feel that that um, the Hebrew. I, I see a lot of misunderstanding all across the board, not just with Hebrews or just with people who practice Kemet or whatever, but a lot uh, everywhere. And and I always try to my, make the attempt to slow conversations down because a lot of people talk at each other and not to each other to where we have a meeting right. of the minds first. Because even if I'm wrong, if if you have a misunderstanding of my error, then you really don't know that I'm actually erroring. So so I think one people need to really just understand what people are saying and what their points and and things are first. Then you could just judge and go from there. That is more health and I see that happening all across the board. I I do see the Bible. Like I said, now now this is one thing that's different uh with with Kemet, the average person they study Kemet as a as a elective. Like if 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 life was a school People study Kemet as an elective course, whereas whereas uh, one of the Abrahamic traditions, be it Judaism, Christianity or Islam, that's usually included included in the K through 12. And and what I mean by that is that most of us grow up being Christian or or of one of those faiths by default, you know, in, in at least in America. And so when we study Kemet, a lot of us did not grow up in a household that was a Kemetic practitioner, as they say. We we grew up in house we grew up in households that were Christian based or Islamic or um, even Hebrew based some of us, and so what happens is when a conversation about Kemet comes up, there's automatically a disparity a little bit because a lot of people who study Kemet also know a little bit about the Abrahamic faith by default because they grew up in it. Now they they, you know, they may not be specialists and and know. Um, things and could be you know certainly wrong but there, there's a lopsidedness right there and so I, I understand that people of a Hebrew faith you're at a you have a greater challenge in 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 these times kinds of conversations as opposed to a person who have some little dibble dabble in the Abrahamic faith by by just growing up and whatnot uh, you know and so on and so forth so I just, I just want to point that out there that that, that should be acknowledged by everyone and and the fact that there are people of these faiths who may misinterpret their own stuff. You know, you got people who take the Bible literally. They they you know, they might think that Jonah was in a in a well literally for three days, three nights and got spat out or or person got right. turned to stone after looking at the city, you know, or whatever the case is. And you, you so you got a variety of people out there. So, you know, I just want to say that, you know, people need to be need to be relaxed and a little more lenient on all of that stuff. But so here's my question though. When it comes to um, the study of the language, though, I'm just curious: Are you studying under a teacher specifically, or are you learning on your own? I initially began on my own, and I definitely incorporated the teacher. I actually believe you know who this teacher is, but I was asked not to um, name him. Now I'm not sure if it's because the person may be embarrassed that he's teaching me, or maybe embarrassed that he's teaching Hebrew. But I was asked by my teacher not to mention who he is so i've actually absolutely held that down okay now i will admit to you for the first because i've been studying the language like like i believe i even heard you say in one of your videos how can he say that he been learning the language for two years and he makes such you know um, elementary or simplistic mistakes it's because initially i was actually self-taught and i recently came under the tutelage of a teacher who in correcting me agreed with many of the things that you corrected me on. So I know that I'm on the right path. Okay. Um, so I, I'm one of the people that agrees that if you're going to learn a language, especially an African based language, you need a teacher. I always tell people don't go and buy a Hebrew dictionary, a 501 Hebrew grammar book and don't have a teacher. You still need a teacher, even an online course requires a teacher you need an orator to actually be able to break down inconsistencies that you may believe exist in the text or ambiguity because i genuinely believe all written texts are subject to some form of ambiguity therefore a teacher is needed you need a teacher to orally rehearse converse and go through the text and through their experience show you things that you may not get because of your own ambiguity looking at the text. So we're in perfect agreement on that. And to answer your question, initially I did not, but yes, now I do. 
Okay, and I and I, I respect you not revealing who that is, but because my question is not really the name of a person. I, I was really just want to know if you're if you're uh, uh, training yourself, you know, because a lot of people do. Like I started out like me on my journey. I started by learning on my own and right. um, I got to a point where where I felt that I had I was competent. And then Dr. Riketti, I men, I took her class her classes so that I could I could see a di- difference if there were any in what I learned on my own and how I uh, gained knowledge and versus what she teach because she's a respectable uh, teacher that I've known teaching for, for, for decades at this point and so I've taken her classes and you know and and so now now I can say you know that she's will be my formal teacher but I start off being you know autodidact and then from there I was able to go even uh, venture even more into the particulars and everything and become a teacher myself and so on and so forth. So I was just interested in, in where you stand in terms of, are you learning your own or do you have a teacher? So okay. it's good. It's good to okay. have a teacher, um, period. And you know, my only hope is that, you know, uh, that the teacher is a good teacher and, and that, you know, you, you getting, you know, you getting good information and so on and so forth. And, 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 you know, so that'll, that'll, that'll come out, you know, as you journey. So that's fine. So I'm a, so I'm gonna pass it on, cause I, I you know I don't want to um, well we you know like I said it's okay that the show went, went over but uh I think brother Sanjetti you know had wanted some dialogue a before little bit. you leave brother Ujawa well, I want to say this to you, you did not have to change your tone, and engage me the way that you now engage me, meaning that I'm letting you know in this moment that I really appreciate that somehow some way, the tone in our dialogue has certainly changed. And you didn't have to do that because I definitely didn't give you that energy the last couple of days, the energy that you're giving me right now. And I want to let you know before you leave, that I definitely appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, no problem. But, you know, and as you get to know me, if you ask around like people, like, you know, I'm, I'm, people say this, you know, I, you know, I, I, I live my life. So I'm, I am who I am, but other people say this about me that I have like patience to steal and this, that, and the third or whatever the case is. So as you, as you engage me, you know, in the future and stuff, you'll find that I'm, I'm just, this is just me period. I don't, I don't like, like I, I have a, uh, a disdain against what I see in the social community being called the conscious community. I do not like it. I speak out against it all the time. So it's like no secret. That's why I don't engage right. in stuff. I'm, I'm, I consider myself a teacher. I've been a teacher for a very long time of various different things. Um, it's just now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on Kemet and the language and everything. But as a teacher, you know, I'd rather do that because I see more um, beneficial benefits and beneficial uh, results out of doing that than to engage for for winning an, an argument and fighting that I, that I do see. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to pass it to um, Brother Sanjati. And, I, you know, I posted the link in here. And, and now, I didn't, I didn't see anybody else come in here. So, remember, um, you know, it's still welcome while we still got time. So, I think Brother Sanjati had, had some words and wanted to dialogue. So, I'm going to pass it on to him. And, um, you know, then I, then we'll probably wrap it up. All right. Uh, this, um, that, that, this, this is a good dialogue so far. Um I just wanted to clear a couple of points and then I want to give context to the, the topic that we discussed today. Um, so as I was looking at the, you know, some of the posts and uh, the one in particular, earlier, some of the word, uh, Hemet Chahi, translated as white. Um, and, and given that I'm like, this looks like a pattern and I'm like, wow, like, my, my man is looking really bad right now. Like, it, it's, I'm like, we got to do something. Because, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't, I don't like seeing black men, you know, trending in that type of era. You, you know what I'm saying? So this is where, you know, where we come in and we're, we're giving these corrections. You know what I mean? And hopes and, and 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 giving advice, like and that's why I said, you know, I wanted you to slow down, you know, what I'm saying, and actually learn it first before speaking, you know, what I'm saying, because you know, if if you're doing it in such a way 
to prepare to debate, you're going to make a lot of errors. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that, you know, we don't like to see people do. So when I use, so when I use the term, um, idiot, it wasn't, I wasn't telling you, you are one. I'm saying this is how it's making you appear. You know, and there was no, there was really no nice way I could put it because that's how bad it is. Well, I'm just going to say was because I'm hoping that moving forward, this would be a past tense event and something that's not continued. You know, and, and it's like I have to speak like, like, you know, we're, we're, we're both men, so I got to be straight up. So that's me being straight up with you. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a straight up dude. You know, like, I don't, I normally don't pull punches, but I don't do it because I want to destroy somebody. I'm doing it because it's, it's out of concern. Otherwise, I'd be like, hey, just go and keep doing it so that we can keep correcting it and making an example out of somebody. But that's that's not what we're trying to do. Anyone who studies Mother Nature, we, we want we want them to do it correctly. You know what I'm saying? Because we were taught correctly and we use these these techniques we learned and we see them time and time again work and work. And and believe you, believe you me that you know, we we dealt with the he he bear, um, me, the Abrahamic paradigm, you know, before. You know, we know how it is. You know, even when you're transitioning, you're trying to learn and you're carrying, you know, either baggage or you're bringing over um, a previous paradigm, how it doesn't work. We've learned these things through trial and error. So we teach people so that there's mistakes that you don't have to make. Because we already made them for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been doing this for decades. I've been doing Metamester, specifically Metamester, for over 20 years. Concentrated. So, uh, going back to what I was 18, well, actually 17, but I, I was thinking at 18. So, you know, that's why we're doing it. Now, in regards to the uh, term. I, I apologize, Sanjay, then, just real quick. Um, yeah. I think some one of somebody in the on the panel I can hear background sound like somebody's chopping some some food or or fixing food or whatever. If you if you could mute your mic, uh, unless that's you, son, Jetty yourself. But uh, everybody else, if you could mute your no, mic no. for me. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. So one of the things that is very helpful um, is when you read the literature, it will it will assist us. The interpretation of the words, or in, in terms, in this particular case, the, the genitive uh, phrase, "hemet chai." So, what I want to do is, I'm going to read a passage from the instructions of Patahotep, and this comes from the old kingdom on the fifth dynasty, is when it was first written. That's where the tomb, uh, the time his tomb was made under the sit or king etc. And then I'm in now that's the old period. Then I'm going to read something from what's called the New Kingdom to show consistency in the culture. So <clears throat> we're going to go to instruction number five. Excuse me, not five. Um hold on. let me uh refine this. All right, well, let me just read the, the new thing when I come back to the time. So, so, you have the instructions of Ani, and he says this, do not control your wife in her house when you know she is efficient. Don't say to her, where is it? Get it. When she has put in its right place. Let your eye observe inside of 
Then you recognize her skill. It is joy when your hand is with her. There are many who don't know this. If a man des desists from strife at home, he will not encounter it yet. Every man who founds a household should hold back the hasty heart. Do not go after a woman. Let her not steal your heart. So here's the context of the passage. So the one, do not control your wife in her house when you know she's efficient. Don't send her. Where is it? Go get it. So here, this is this would be inconsistent with the interpretation of the woman or wife being a property of man. Because it's he's saying don't control really don't order her around. Especially when you know she's efficient. Don't send her where to go get it. Like you tell her, you know, go get me this, go get me that, do it, do that. When she has put it in its right place. Let your eye observe in silence. Then you recognize her skill. So this is so this here is giving the woman agency. See, when some, when a person is a is property, that person does not have agency. You, you know, are you following me so far, brother? I'm, I'm definitely following you, my brother. I'm listening attentively. All right. <clears throat> All right. So then it says it is joy. When your hand is with her, there are many who don't know this. Meaning, this this is wisdom gained through, of course, spirit. He says there are many who don't know this. So, when your hand is with her, so this implies the sense of equality, hand with, not when your hand is over her, or when your hand controls her, is when your hand is with her. If a man desists. From strike at home, you will not encounter its beginning. In other words, you know how people say happy, happy wife, happy life, it's, you know, something we're all familiar with. Even though I, I like to say happy spouse, happy house is more uh, equivalent. But here, Ani is advising, you know, don't create trouble in your house with her. And you'll never, and then you won't experience it this beginning. Every man found a household should hold back a hasty heart. Meaning, you know, control your emotions. And don't go after a woman let, and let her not steal your heart. So in other words, you know, don't, don't pursue a woman when you don't have control over your emotions. So in this passage, you know, I ask, in fact, I'm going to ask you, from this passage, do you perceive, does a woman seem like she's property or does it seem like she has agency? The reason why I perceived um, from the text that it was speaking from the context of her being property is the, some of the verses that close out the particular um, portion that you're reading, where it says that restrain her from power and then restrain her from power uh, hold on let me read it verbatim from my phone i'm talking to you on my phone let me look at it really quick so i can have it verbatim and i'll just make something up give me one second <clears throat> okay um when you this is this is the translation that i have when you prosper and found your house and love your wife with ardor fill her belly clothe her back Ointment soothes her body, gladden her heart as you live. She is a fertile field for her master. Do not contend with her in court. Keep her from power. Restrain her. Her eye is her storm when she gazes. Thus will you make her stay in your house. So it is really the verse that says, um, keep her from power. Restrain her. Her eye is her storm when she gazes. Thus will you make her stay in your house. Those are the verses that, that caused me to um, contextualize the verse as, as, as looking at women on a whole as property because I would never, and I certainly didn't in my book, in my wisdom literature, in my own book on the matriarchs of the covenant that I spoke of earlier, I never spoke of restraining 
women from power. That's almost impossible. Women are innately more powerful than men. To restrain her is to actually take fire in your hand. You're going to get burned. So I, I couldn't understand what the speaker meant by restrain her from power. Maybe you could shed some light on that. Okay. So what you, what you read from is instruction number 20, and it's regarding the treatment of a wife. All right. So I'm going to read as well. Says, when you are accomplished and establish your house, you should love your wife with ardor. And the ardor is another word for like passion, heat of passion. I understand all right. right. Yeah. Okay. This is for the listener. This is for the listener. Okay. Um, fill her belly, clothe her back. Ointment is the prescription for her lips. So, in other words, you know, you're serving her. You're making, you, you're providing food for her. You're providing clothes for her. You're giving her things that, you know, that, that, that she likes, as well as her needs. Make her happy as long as you exist. So, when you're making someone happy, you're, you're serving them as well. She is a useful field for her Lord, and again, I don't really like the translation, but net. So in this context, Nev is more like, some people translate it as possessor, but it's like a protector. And this is this an interpretation that, that we've learned from the Dr. Bikini author. Because a Nev is like a manager of an estate, if you will. So, See, like the term Nevit Het. Like women have that have that title as well, Nev. Nevit Het is translated as mistress of the house. Or you could say an overseer of an estate. So, you know, women have power positions. So when you manage a house or estate. So remember, if she's coming into your house, that means that you are the manager of your estate. So that's why I said she is a useful field for her Lord or the person who you, the man, because you're providing for her. Not Lord, like, you know, I commanded you, you do it without saying, kind of thing. And remember going back right. to the instruction. Ah, ah. Okay. And then it goes on to say, you should not adjudicate her. So adjudicate is, now for the listeners, like, do not pass judgment on her. You know, don't don't command her like you're her judge. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right, so to the next page. And this was the passage I was looking for. Um, then it says, keep her. Now, here's, here's the one where I believe, you know, the interpretation comes from, which I can understand. Right. Keep her away mm -hmm. from control of her foot. Her eye, when it looks, is her gaze. You're restricting her is the way to keep her in your house. So here's the context. So if you, you know, go back to the previous slide, the previous slide talk about fill her bed and clothe her back, wait a etc. Make right. her happy as long as you live. This is you providing for her. So if you're providing for her, there's no need for her to what? Control her foot, if you will. Meaning, she doesn't need to go outside of the house to, you know, to get what she needs. You're restricting her is the way to keep her in your house. Restriction meaning everything you need is here. And, and, and again, the context is to go back to the previous line. So just to show that, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to manipulate the, the, the interpretation and translation. No, I, I honestly don't point. believe you. I honestly don't believe you're trying to doctor the text, but I, but I do want to say this to you. Do you understand why it would be construed by people who are examining these verses that the, that those verses may have uh, misogynistic tones? When you speak of restraining a woman from power, most people, especially in modern thought, which I'm not even sure it's applicable in, the, applicable in the conversation because we're talking about ancient spiritual text, which is not modern. But I'm just still dealing with where we're at right now. In the modern world, Brother Sergetti, you know, if we read a verse that says, restrain her from power, 
Thus, when you keep her in your house, you know everyone is going to say that that's misogynistic. And that is the point that I chose to make on, on my page. I said that we can look at various texts that is in the comedic tradition and we could see how many people can see misogyny there as well. It doesn't mean it's correct. It doesn't mean it's accurate. But it means that people may see that. Just as how I said to Brother Jabari, just because you're seeing mis uh, misogyny is not necessarily authority in the text. You don't even understand the language in the text. So I appreciate what you're doing right now because what you're doing is showing that when you have command of the language, you can actually go into the text and you can delineate what is being said versus someone who doesn't have command of the language and they see something that is not necessarily there because of their limited eye view. And that is the scope of what I was trying to get at is that some of us, not all of us, but some of us look outside of our own paradigm and critique on other spiritual systems and may not have command on those spiritual systems and thus we may be off. And that is challenging because when we do that, we come across as disingenuous and sincere to people who are practitioners in that faith. Is it, is it possible that you can understand that? Yeah, yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Uh, and again, the thing is that people will isolate certain verses where if you go to the next verses, it will answer the question. So okay. that brings us to the next line, which is, which is line 336 through 338. It says, the vulva she gives at her disposal is water. Since it is requested, make for it a basin. So vulva would understand that, you know, that's her you know, vagina. She's saying, she's saying that the vulva she gives, she gives at her disposal Meaning, it is her choice. The husband cannot command her to give him sex. Okay. All right. Okay. And when it says, at her disposal is water. And we know water is precious. The water is one of the main sources of life. Death, the woman, is the source of life. And this also brings us back to that sign that we discussed earlier, the him sign, where, where I explained that that is a well of water, which is associated with women. So back to this verse here, the ball which she gives at her disposal is water. Line 38, 338 says, since it is, watch this, requested, meaning you have to ask permission from her. And then it, it ends up by saying, make for it a basin. Basin, there's a type of a container, like a natural kind of container. Again, this goes back to the idea of that sign, which is a of water. So when, since it is requested, you know, you don't request anything from a person that you perceive as your property because someone who is, who is perceived as property does not have agency. And a person who is considered property cannot give you something at his or her disposal at their own choice. You take it. So that, that teaching there from Ani, the instructions of Ani, coming from the New Kingdom, and the instructions of Patahotep coming from the Old Kingdom. Again, we have consistency here. And on top of that, if women were considered property, then we wouldn't have uh, women who were Nisut King. It would, it, it would never happen. You know, and if women were considered property, then then I would have to well, I would have to question their matrilineality because a king and man cannot have a leadership role as the highest priest of the land. Well, that we brother Sanjet, brother Sanjeti, while I have your um, attention right now, I want to ask you a brief question. 
we had a great bill at the um comedic war conference in my opinion with me and you on the side that we had like um maybe almost a 15 minute dialogue in my opinion it was a really really good bill i want to continue briefly maybe for a minute or so and just ask you this this one question are there any uh words in the metanetia for women that speak about her intellectual or spiritual qualities uh, repeat, is, is there any what, it, uh, what I'll, I'll read it, reiterate it is there any word in the middle nature that speaks about the spiritual and or intellectual qualities of a woman and or a wife um, uh, if I if I um, understand you correctly so the word you have a national word for spirit you have a general word for spirit, let's say the ak, for example. That's translated as spirit. Um, you know, some of us would translate it as ancestor. Um, and when you go to the text, for example, in the Paps of Ani, uh, if, yeah, let me see, uh, it's plate 26, so feet 26, chapter 78. And I'm just going off the top of my head here. Um, yeah, chapter 78, where, where it says, translated, indeed, I am a spirit. And the term there is, uh, ak. Some people say ku. But then there's a feminine form of that word, ak, et. So there's recognition of women becoming venerated ancestors in spirit. And when you read the text, you'll see what all those qualities require to become a venerated spirit, which is righteous, righteous doing. So you'll find from the old kingdom all, all the way through command history, the very tombs, you hear, you'll see things like, I have to give in clothes to those who need. I have to give a water to those who are thirsty. I have provided. I have knowledge. Like the word wreck is can be a, a word for uh, like a knowledgeable person. Right to well, know. Right. Right. So if I say wreck, that is a word meaning as a verb to know. If I say reku or reket, these are two ways of saying knowledge as a now. Now, if I want to say one who is knowledgeable by using the participle, I could say reki if I'm speaking about a man. Right? Now, okay. if I'm speaking about a woman, I, I could still say reki or say reketi. One who is knowledgeable but you're speaking about a woman. For example, as reketi Amma. Her name means one who is knowledgeable. And that's the participle that we discussed earlier. That'll be the double release at the end of a word with the suffix to the word, to the root word. Now, does um, that answer your question, brother? That, that definitely answers my question. And the reason why I asked you that question is because I believe that if we could take the time to, to have people who have command of the language and the traditions, be those people who become the the people who um, transmit knowledge of what a text is saying, I think we all would have a bit of understanding, um, meaning that um, most people say that the Bible is misogynistic and their, their view, the biblical view of women is, you know, property and, you know, they're not, they're not good for anything but breeding. But if you look at the, the very first woman in the Hebrew text, her name is Eve in English, but in Hebrew is Chawa. And the word Chawa, literally means to tell or to speak or it literally means speech which is the articulation of thought we know that we're when we're in an academic setting the way that we cause our teachers to know that we're that we're understanding what they're feeding us is that we repeat what they're saying in our own words any genuine teacher that is teaching a class the way that you know that your students are understanding what you're saying you will ask them to repeat or speak or expound upon what was just taught 
in their own words because the verbalization of thought or the articulation, the expression of thought via speech shows that we are discerning and we are understanding what is being said or taught to us. So my point is that from the Hebraic perspective, women are actually the higher species when it comes to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Hence why throughout the book of Proverbs, the word for wisdom is always in the feminine. There is no word for wisdom in Hebrew in the masculine. The word for wisdom, the very word for wisdom in itself in the Hebrew language is a feminine word. And the idea is that the feminine or the woman, women in a whole, have a greater edge or a greater grip on understanding um, high uh, morality, high spirituality, and high intellectual ideas. It doesn't mean that man can't come close, but we believe that women have a greater affinity in the Hebrew culture. So what I'm saying to you is that a lot of the disconnect in our communities is coming from people who really have such a disconnect with the literature and then go up on platforms and spew whatever they want to spew. And then people like yourself who are intelligent hear what they have to say and say to yourself, well, I'm not putting no respect on the Bible because that's a crock of you know what. There's no way I'm accepting that. Unless you have a conversation with people who are more astute and have command of the language in the text, you may appreciate ideas that are more um, weighty, that have a little bit more substance than the average Joe that gets up and says, uh, and, and I don't want to curse in the show, but just for the sake of saying what is said, you know, some groups say, you know, a woman is my bitch in the Hebrew community. If you say that in my congregation, you will be removed forcefully. Just just understand that. The congregation that I come from is called Shema Israel, located at 297 uh, Saratoga Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. It's a congregation that Nasi Yashuvel uh, came from that his father heads. That's where I grew up at. If you showed any disrespect to women, you would be forcefully removed. We, we didn't play that because we held women to a high regard and a high standard. So what I'm saying to you is that I appreciate when people speak of our culture and those who misuse it, I, I appreciate when people delineate the misuse and not categorize the misuse as what is the accepted norm. Because I can tell you as a person who's been in the community 26 years now, that what you're hearing and what many are hearing in the community is not what is taught in authentic Israelite schools. We don't teach against women empowering themselves. In fact, we, we teach that women are greater than men in, in more ways than one. We don't teach that um, the creator is all masculine. We teach that the creator or the divine aspect of creation is both male as well as female. And we also definitely don't teach against Africa. Um, there are groups that do, but I wouldn't come to you, Brother Sanjeti, and expect you to have to hold to everything that young Pharaoh says simply because he's wearing an ankh and because he calls himself a misut. I have enough understanding to separate him and his ignorance from the brilliance that you convey. And those in my community who respect people like you, we would love to see you do that too. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. I just want to say something because um, I, I do want to kind of clo close it out. And, I, and you know, the dialogue is good. You know, we can we can do this again another time and everything. But for the, for the listeners, I just want to um, do an FYI real quick. Um, and this is something I stressed in the past. And I stress, you know, in sessions dealing with the language itself is that, you know, we grow up in as uh, our mother tongue is English. For the most part, a lot of us, our first language is English and we're taught English grammar. We're taught English literature in K through 12 in our schooling. And because English doesn't have a marked gender um, in our language, it's kind of hard for us to really grasp grammatical gen the difference between grammatical gender and natural gender in other languages and other cultures and so we have to guard ourselves to to keep in mind that there is a distinction between grammatical gender of words and then natural gender and and the psychology of the people on why they chose to make one word uh one or the other and in, in terms of their referent so we have to keep all that in mind. And the reason why I say that is because you have uh, in languages, you have feminine grammatical feminine words that can refer to men or a man or something that we would say naturally is a is a man gender yes. wise, sexually gender wise and vice versa. And so what we tend to do 
uh, not understanding that people tend to kind of equate the two. And and that that would be a problem when when people start to really analyze things, and it could it could be a potential problem. So I always like to point that out that um, that grammatical gender does not equate to a uh, natural gender, and that the psychology of the people, um, a lot of it is lost through through just the history of humanity on why uh, in gender specific languages why one gender was chosen over another for for, for particular words. So I like to always keep that in um in perspective uh along with the, with you asking about um wife in terms of um uh different things like for, like i'm gonna just give you a, a, a an egyptian example of what you said for wisdom and things um some words are grammatically feminine um because the the feminine the grammatical feminine uh suffix or um affix to words also doubles is what we call a portmanteau morpheme where not only does it grammatically denote uh, feminine in terms of its concordance with other words, but it also holds a place for abstraction. So a lot of a lot of abstract ideas are grammatically feminine, even though it may not be talking about a woman, a naturally feminine as uh, ref referent, talking about a woman or anything. And so we have to understand that it, you know it's not equated, you know one uh, it's not a one for one like that so i just want to always like to point that out um but it, hey if, if we if we could start wrapping it up you know I, I know it's a lot more that 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 we all can say but i would like to right. you know, um, um wrap it up so uh, i'll give as you the last as yeah. the last person to join in i just wanted to say this brother Bujawa. thank you for allowing me your platform again you certainly didn't have to thank you brother sanjeti for engaging me again you certainly didn't have to and by the way it was definitely me chopping um, garlic, <laughs> as well as chopping scotch bonnet pepper. I was making a, um, a, what we call a Aito curry dish, which is a pure vegan curry dish. And I like to cut my garlic and my scotch bonnet pepper together, and I cut them real fine. So that was me on the chopping block earlier. Oh, okay, no problem. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, so I'm gonna open up for any last rounds. I, anybody else who's in the panel, if you have any closing um, remarks, if we could be concise and just um, pass the mic and and uh give some closing remarks so you know uh i guess we'll start it doesn't matter who everybody just take a turn and uh just be concise if you can and we'll wrap it up so don't everybody grab the mic at once but uh you know uh go ahead and unmute yourself and and uh just give some closing remarks uh if i don't hear anybody you know <laughs> uh go ahead uh, i guess sanjeti you got any any closing uh, remarks um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to try to give someone else a chance. Um, you know, I, 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 this is a good dialogue. It, it, it kind of reflective or reminds me when we get back in December, you know, when we had, you know, those, uh, those strong disagreements. You know, we need to see more black men. You know, some people don't like black and then they have, to, you know, you can have a confrontation of disagreements, but what is the process? of reconciling and coming to uh, mutual understanding and having a hard conversation with each other and coming out in, in, you know, as brothers. We need to see more of that. All the arguing back and forth. Yeah, people are going to argue that that's human nature. But what are you going to do with that, you know, is the question. Are you going to, you know, can, can you have that long? You know, do you want to hold on to anger, et cetera? And, and harbor that overnight, it, it's not healthy. But so more more people need to see more of us having these kinds of dialogues. We we're being real with each other with the intention of having resolution. And that that's manhood. So I believe that we've done that tonight. Um, you know, look at the whole process from past couple of days and even, you know, climaxing to today's um, uh, multiple dialogues. So, uh, I, I think I think we've accomplished a lot. All right. Um, I know it was silent before. Anybody else before? Because I'm a, I'm gonna close it out myself. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna give myself the final word. Uh, and if no one else, um, all right. So let me close out then. So yeah. Um, just as a very quick review. I know it's a long video. So if anybody who is watching this video as an archive video and you get to this point at the end. 
you are a trooper. <laughs> you have stamina because it's a long video um, and everything. So I appreciate uh, you sticking it through. And for, for those listening now, I appreciate you um, hanging out because it's, it's a middle of the week and uh, you could be doing anything. And um, and I appreciate the brother Zion Les coming on. And, you know, because it's it's through dialogue that things will be smooth and smooth out, even if there are um, uh, misunderstandings. I always believe that. And I always will. And, and, and it just proves itself time and time and time again. Um, but this is not to say that it won't be any future disagreements. The, but the thing I would like to stress, and this goes for everybody, that even when you disagree, you should always, always uh, practice good character and do it respectfully. And that's the thing, because because, you know, everybody is not going to be on the same page all the time. You know, there's there's a room for synchronization. And, you know, let the dust settle once data is provided in terms of scholarship, you know, because we're all probing um, information and some people may not be privy or knowledgeable about X, Y and Z that another person can bring to the table. And until that happens, there may be disagreements, but disagreements don't ne don't need to become adversarial and personal or none of that stuff. And I and I believe that these platforms kind of foster that, which is why I do not agree with those the you know the platforms that i've seen and i don't participate um so i but i think this dialogue is a perfect example it's a it's a it's an example of what can be achieved uh on you know if people just we start talking and everything so i think it's, it's a it's a good it's a good way to um show that and i think we've done that um but the thing the th three things that i addressed um before was three statements or, or you know an issue about uh namart um in the dictionary entry of budge the um genitive constructed phrase of hemet chai and then lastly the uh, word sharma or shalom and so those are three issues i address and then so go back people can go back and watch it um and you know i i um, encourage the dialogue if you if you disagree with anything uh, or have some other information that you feel left out or or something was said in error by all means present it and uh, we can go go from there all right so but I hope everybody was edified in some form or fashion with tonight's discussion and for the future when we put people's names in our titles at least we're not attacking and we're not making anything personal but what we do, see, I don't, me personally, I don't like to do the innuendo. I don't like to talk about somebody, but not really, but not really talk about them. I'd rather just mention, you know, so, so, so the purpose of, of putting Zion Lex's name in the title was not an attack by any means. And it was not about him, the person. It's just a reference. You have to have a reference point to claims being made. So if somebody claims that, you know, X equals five and they're wrong and i'm addressing the claim then i owe it to the listeners of what i'm saying to to the origin of the claim so i have to say you know so and so is is the source of this particular claim i'm addressing blah blah blah, and that's the spirit of why um we mention people's names just you know just to let people know um for that and so again you know i appreciate everybody tuning in and i will say um shemim hotep to those and like i broke down the word hotep why we use it when we depart from one another um when we send people on a journey this is in ancient times again just to reiterate when people leave your house and we do this we do this to this very day um not i'm sure not one of us has ever visited our grandparents and went to their house and left empty-handed Everybody that I know's grandparents will always try to make you leave their house with something, whether you take it some furniture or some plate of food or whatever the case is. And we have to understand that Hotep in its essence is an offering and it's and it's talking about food or sustenance. <clears throat> and because in the in ancient past we traveled long distances, people made sure you left with some type of sustenance on your journey. So when we say shim, which means to go. Shem Imhotep, go in peace, which means go with this particular offering and be in in and satisfied as you journey. And so this this is the the spirit behind when we say Etm Hotep, welcoming somebody, and then Shem Imhotep, uh, departing from them. And so with that, 
I will say Shimon Hotep to everybody and hope you all um were edified tonight. So um so yeah, Shimon Hotep. Great show. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come on. Thank you very much. Great show. All right, Shimon Hotep. All right, come on. And I know on the YouTube side, you can still hear me. And so, again, I'll say Shimon Hotep. I just have to shut down the show. And, again, I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. And, you know, um, if you, if you, of course, if you like the video, thumb it up. If you don't like the video, thumb it up as well because thumb up doesn't necessarily mean you like it. Um, you know, whatever the case is, you can leave some comments. Join our Facebook group, Seshu Mani Better Nature. If you want to continue this conversation or you have questions that I didn't get a chance to answer, uh, or anything you know i didn't see questions so much in the chat so you know you feel free to join our facebook group and ask questions um about this topic or these you know subject matter or anything else all right so again i say uh shimon hotel